You heard it there. We're going to see Clemson's offense on the field first. So guess what, Trevor Lawrence? You're going to get thrown right into the fire tonight. The biggest game of your life that has been only 19 years you've been on this earth. You're going to get a chance to play the biggest game on your, of your life, and you got to be out there first. Chip, that has to be part of the strategy, right? To get Trevor Lawrence out there. Don't let him get a chance to settle in. That's got to be what Nick was thinking, right? Well, the other thing, and it's a Bill Belichick thing, is if you defer, you get the ball at the beginning of the second half. If you can have the ball at the end of the first half and score, then get the ball back, you steal a possession. It never really works out, but when it does, if you <laughs> score right at the end of first, then you get in the second, you're up. you got a chance for a two-score game. So that's typical Nick Saban football right there. So did you always defer? Did you Always defer. So regardless of the talent, the offense or defense you had of the opponent you always wanted to defer it was we either, it was an automatic defer unless there was a weather factor that was override everything like if it was like a torrential storm or you could pin them down there and you could get something going with the wind but it was number one we were deferring unless there was a weather thing it's not about putting the young kid out there first it's got it's really the strategy and the analytics of it how about heads or tails were you a heads or tails guy <laughs> i was a tails never fails <laughs> Tails never tails. fails. That's good. It's good to know, Steve, that this is how the, the high-paid head coaches that have all this stuff at stake, that's how they operate. By the way, I'm glad I'm, I don't have to be lonely anymore. Look who I found. Tim Tebow, nice enough to join us. Tim, right before kickoff, give us your thoughts. What, what are you expecting tonight? I'll tell you what. The one thing about Clemson is they're not intimidated. They're not afraid of Alabama. You could see that. The other thing that I wanted to, to point out was – there was a lot of trash talk like the semifinals. Right. They weren't chippy. Both teams are so focused on what they have to do to win. I think that's a great sign to play well. Clemson's offense on the field first, Levy. Yep, this ball's going to come right to us. We're on the Clemson sideline. They're kicking away from us, and that's the new touchback rule. Good play from inside the five. Why not start at the 25? Yeah, when you got a chance to get a clean one at the 25, you'll take it every time. When they change the rule, we were probably 90% this season. Let's just fair catch it. Right. Because you're probably not going to get it out past the 25 anyway. So. Do you like the rule? I love the rule. I think it helps. Um, and, and I also think for you on offense, you get to determine what hash you want the ball on. Yep. So now you can, you can it doesn't yep. change your play call. You fair caught it on the other sideline, but the ball's on this hash now. All right, here we go, Trevor Lawrence. It's your big night. What do you got? What are you going to do tonight? What are we going to be remembering after tonight? The true freshman at 19 from the 19-yard line. And that's throw number one. You know, you always hear uh, analysts talk about it. The throws are high from a quarterback. That could be a sense of jitters. Do you agree with that? Oh, I agree 100%. You want to see how the ball's coming off his hand. It was actually a really well-thrown ball, but the offensive tackle couldn't get the defender's hands down. And Levy, that's that's Anthony Jennings, too. I think you got to watch out for number 33 on that side all night. Wow. Travis Etienne gets buried. I'm curious, Levy, you guys saw a lot of Clemson this year. What did you think of ETN when you saw him? Uh, I think he is the least talked about superstar in this game. I can't believe how little attention he got all week. Uh, he might be the key to the game. No question. You got a 1,500-yard runner. And really, for Clemson to be in this ball game, they need to establish offensively, and he's the guy to do it. And it's just to see if they run to the outside away from those monsters in the middle for Bama. Lawrence to throw. And on third down, he always goes to Hunter Renfro, and he tried to find him there. Levy, I'm looking at I'm looking at uh, Lawrence right now. First three plays, Tim, you've played in games and atmospheres like this. I don't want to make too much out of the first three plays, but what did you see from Trevor on those first three? I, I think he was okay. He looked poised enough, but was interesting to me on third down. Alabama adjusted and they put their linebackers to pass rush because they've had some linebackers, some defensive ends go down. So that will be key. If Alabama was able to get pass rush on third and long with their linebackers moving up the defensive end. So it's a three and out for that Bama defense. Get some pressure, get the punt away. Fair catch for Jalen Waddle. So Alabama's offense takes over. So Clemson's number four in the country in scoring. Now you get Alabama on the field, number two. Only Oklahoma was better this season. Give me your thoughts on Tua Tungavailoa, man. I, I think he's the best player in the country. He told me this week 
He said, Timmy, over the last two weeks, it's the most improvement I've made in my entire life. Just these two weeks. These last two weeks, the most improvement I've ever made. That's scary. That's really scary. Considering what he's, he's done. Been all year. Yeah. The most efficient passer in the country this season to a Tonga Vailoa from the 21 yard line. He's going to use tight ends a lot, especially Irv Smith. And I think that's a great way to start because I think the biggest weakness for Clemson's defense is their safeties. Will they be able to match up against Jalen Waddell, Irv Smith? Look for Alabama to go after them all night long. Chip, I know you guys are walking. How do you deal with explosive receivers in a game plan defensively? It's tough because there are so many weapons. It's really what makes it difficult with this offense. There's not one guy you can kind of key on. And, and it, again, with Tua being so accurate, it's going to be difficult to slow these guys down. They come out passing again and completing again. Alabama on the move with Devontae Smith. So explosive. Yep. Doesn't get all the love because of Jerry Judy, of course, all the attention. But well, Smith can do some things. He's uh he's in a groove already. This is this game is not too big for Tua. I can tell you that right now. Two really good decisions, both RPO situations there. He got the ball out quick. It's, they're going to be tough to stop if he's just, if he's on like this. I'm telling you. I'll be curious to see how they use Devonte Smith. Remember the game-winning touchdown in overtime last year. Oh, oh it's good. intercepted! Intercepted! AJ Terrell house call for Clemson. Timmy, what'd you see? So, all three of those plays, Brent Venables gave them different looks. In this play, he thinks it's a post high, but it goes to two trap, meaning it really is a cover two look where this the corner is baiting him. Tua thinks it's one high, but it's really two. He baited him. That's a great call by Brent Venables. Greg Hugel, one of the great kickers in Clemson history. On for the extra point. Clemson, one of the best defensive teams in the country this year. They were the number one scoring defense in the country, and they can take the ball away, too. A.J. Terrell, he's had some big interceptions, including the ACC championship game. Clemson up 7-0. Look at Davos. He's fired up, baby. And that was after Clemson went three and out, and they have the lead. AJ Terrell with a pick six house call for Clemson and you've seen that before you faced the Brent Venables defense in a championship so we faced Brent Venables in the championship in the 08 season and he came out and didn't do anything that he did the entire year and at the end of that drive the first drive of the game he showed me a two trap look and I threw an interception to their safety on the exact same look that Tua just saw because it was something they never showed. I wasn't expecting it. Right. He showed it to me. It was an interception. But in the second half, I was able to get him back on the game-winning drive when they showed that look and we adjusted. The question is, will Tua be able to adjust in the same situation? Yeah, big spot for, for Tua right here, Chip. I know you know what that's like, having to make those adjustments back and forth. Hey, Adam, there's something else to remember with Tua tunga by for the great game he had last year. His first pass was a pick. That's right. Last that's a great year. call, Steve. Great he came, call. He came out of halftime. Everybody's, whoa, who's this guy? How do we say his name? And he throws <laughs> a pick right away. He'll, he'll, be, he'll be fine. It was a great play call by Brent Venables. You just got a, one of those where you just tip your cap. He brought field pressure and played two trap behind it. I think they'll be good. Alabama goes to the run, their first running play of the game. And it's an amazing how it started, right? So it's three and out. And then two is on a roll. They complete a couple passes. And how quickly the complexion changes. Yeah, the momentum in a football game like this is always huge. Again, it goes back to Brent Venables with a great play call. I think if they can get settled on this drive, it'll be really interesting. But if, if, if Clemson can get a three and out here, then this could be a different story. Coach Kelly, as you know, that two trap, it does have weaknesses. So if he knows it's coming again, 
Look for Alabama to try to hit the wide side of the field or up the middle on a seam bender. Yeah, if he can, if he understands when he gets the field pressure like that, the tough part with that coverage is if you can get surprised about it, but if you see it coming, the middle of the field is wide open, and wide I wouldn't open. be surprised if he comes back to that. And that, those are the things that we talked about with Clemson, too, over the course of the season. The middle of their field, their safeties especially, gave up some big plays. South Carolina had a big game. Texas A&M and Kellen Mond threw for a lot of yards in that game. Yeah, and that's where Jalen Waddle could be huge. Okay. Coming from the slot and winning on that two-trap coverage. They got a first and ten from the 38-yard line. Tonga Vailoa. Oh, deep shot. Wants it all. Judy got it. Touchdown, Alabama. How about that for an answer? Did that just go down the middle of the field? I think so, guys. Right down the middle of the field. They answered. I think it went right down the middle of the field. It's the biggest weakness for Clemson. Hey, Levy, it's kind of fun standing with a couple of guys that know what they're talking about. <laughs> well, that, that speed of Jerry Judy, how yeah. he can still run past people is amazing. In the in the throw itself, to, to be that accurate on a deep ball like that, it was an interior pressure, a good pickup by the running back, and then they split and the safeties just like we talked about. He beat Tanner. He beat the safety yeah. Tanner Muse, Tanner, guys. Tanner Muse, you were talking about a pregame. I, I hate to be hard on the kid, but he gave up two touchdowns against South Carolina. That's the biggest weakness on the defense. Alabama went right after him. Yeah. Well, that, that extra point just got through. I think that was pretty close. That was too. close, Leaves. Oh, my great route. What a great so, route. So what a start to this one. An explosive start. It's 7-7. We haven't played three minutes yet. So look, the traditional coverage telecast is currently on ESPN. If you feel like you're a traditional guy. <laughs> now, usually, that, that's, yeah. for, that's for the purists, Levy. That's for the purists. <laughs> you can just stay right here with us, all right? We got you covered. Hey, yeah. we're responsible for, for explosive touchdowns and all that. We got a pick six already and a deep shot for a touchdown. And we just told you it was going to happen. It's nice to have guys like Chip Kelly and Tim Tebow who actually know what they're talking about to make guys like Levy and me look like we know what we're talking well, about. The amazing thing is on ESPN right now, the score is 3 nothing. I know. It's, it's so weird. Like somehow we get the more explosive plays. This broadcast is much <laughs> more exciting. That's Steve Levy and Chip Kelly on the bottom. Adam and me and Tim Tebow up top. We're on the Alabama sideline. Steve and Chip are on the Clemson sideline. A.J. Terrell with a pick six. Tua Tungavailoa with an explosive touchdown play to Jerry Judy, the Bolitnikoff winner. And we're seven up. You've seen the adjustments, guys, already that these coaches have made. Yeah, it's been back and forth. Brent Venerables made it, it came out with a crazy look. It got Tua. They came back, went after Tua. Uh, Tanner Muse with the double move. It's back and forth. What's the next move? Yeah. And uh, Ian Fitzsimmons on the ESPN radio broadcast just came over to us and let us know that after the pick by Tonga Vailoa that he threw to A.J. Terrell for the pick six, goes over to the offensive coordinators, looks at the grease board, goes, what happened? They diagram the interception, and he goes... I've got it. Comes back a couple plays later. That's what you see, the readjustment. Yeah. When you know that coverage is coming, yeah. it's easy to attack it, but it's a great disguise. Yeah. Opportunity number two for the 19-year-old Trevor Lawrence. Clemson went three and out. Chip, I think they need a first down here to settle down a little bit. They do. Whoa, that was wow. all. Same thing we just talked about. If the ball's sailing... You know, he's not not that settled, and that one kind of took off on him a little bit. He's swinging his arm. You know, I think it's a difference right now. Tua has some experience in games like this, and, and Trevor's just learning. Look who's here, people. It's the legend. It's Lee Corso, everybody. Oh, oh, oh attaboy. The sunshine scooter. Lawrence to throw. Even a short game could be effective right now. There's a flag down. We'll check the marker. I like the call right there because his two most comfortable passes is a quick out and the skinny post. Yeah. So he's not throwing it well. They go right to the quick out. Get his timing going. I think they're trying to settle him down a little bit. But this penalty is going to hurt. Personal foul. Tripping. Offense. Wow. Number 74. Half the distance to the goal. Repeat. Second down. John Simpson, the left guard, got tagged for tripping. 
That's a tough one. Yeah. You complete a throw, you settle down a little, and you're backed up now, and they'll start now from their own 12-yard line. Yeah. And that was Quinnen Williams, who's probably the best player on the field. Yeah. And that was the matchup that really worried me is Clemson's offensive line trying to contain him. If they can get a rush with just four guys and not have to blitz like Clemson is, I think that really bodes well for Alabama on the defensive side. Chip, doesn't that kind of determine the game? Who can get to the quarterback without having to throw an extra guy in there? Yeah, and I think Clemson's already tipped their hand that they're going to have to pressure to get to him, and that's what they did when Tua threw the pick, and that's what they did when Tua threw the touchdown. But right now, you know, I think Alabama's just sitting back and playing coverage and letting their front handle it. So that was a second and 22, so they get some of the yardage back. But third and 14, Lawrence and Clemson can't live there all night, Chip. No, they're not. You're going to see two high safeties here. You're going to see some type of match coverage underneath, and then some type of twist blitz up front. And it'll be interesting to see if they can get home with the pressure. Yeah, this, this, this is Hunter Renfro time, guys. That's exactly right. Down the middle, Hunter Renfro down the middle. Deep shot. Got him. There we go again. T. Higgins, Levy. Right in front of us, down to the 16. It's going to be a game full of big plays. It's amazing. Right? Doesn't it feel like it tonight? And all we heard about was the great defense coming in, and it's an offensive show right now. You know, it's third and 14, and you play in split safety coverage. You think you can't throw that ball, but you look at T. Higgins accelerate there. There's a little bit of a mismatch. I'm not sure the safeties from uh, Alabama are going to be able to hang with these receivers. Second most 20-plus yard plays in the country this year, guys. That was Clemson. ETN time. On his down. Wow. Could not bring Travis Etienne down. A touchdown to Chip. They save us a walk. We don't have to walk all the way down there now. Yeah, and a great, a great play, ball, play call by Clemson right there. They ran zone to the right, but they hit the running back, went to the left, and had the defense going in the wrong direction. Look at the back go opposite the offensive line there. Hunter Renfro does a great job in pulling out of not getting a clip. And then he runs it in. So obviously it was a, a little bit of misdirection, and that's what makes it very difficult to defend. That's a great play call by Clemson. What you're seeing right now is an unbelievable chess match going back and forth between the coordinators on both sides of the ball. This is fun to watch. It is fun to watch, Coach. But it, it's also confusion from Alabama secondary. They got beat on the third down, and then they couldn't get lined up. They weren't sure where exactly they were supposed to go, and you can see the result. Travis Etienne knows how to break tackles. Closing in on the ACC rushing touchdown record, Clemson up a touchdown. Back on this sideline with Chip Kelly, so the fans love this, Chip. What are the, are the coaches happy right now? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Well, it depends. If you're an offensive coach, you're excited. If you're a defensive coach, right. you're going, what the heck is going on right now? So in the prior four championship games, in the first five minutes of game time, there was a total of seven points. In the, all four games combined? Combined. Wow. We have 21 <laughs> points here already. This over-under thing, whatever it is, <laughs> over, people, over. <laughs> To the 25-yard line. Alabama gets to come back out and go back to work. To a tongue of Iloa, an interception on the opening drive, touchdown on the next series. Now what do you want to see, Timmy? Please. More of the same. Listen, they're okay. It was one really bad play, but before that, they were moving the ball. Alabama's offense is fine. Their defense needs to figure out a yeah. few things, though. Man, explosive start. Again, this is our ESPN2 field pass. We'll be with you all night. Tim Tebow, Adam Amin on the Alabama sideline. Steve Levy, Chip Kelly on the Clemson sideline. 25-yard line is where Tua Tungabailoa takes over for Alabama. Josh Jacobs. They can just rotate these backs in and out. And that, that's one of my favorite players in college football, Josh Jacobs. He's got an incredible story. If you never heard it, go look it up on ESPN.com. It's incredible. But Josh is a freak. He's a 450-pound bencher. He's a 600-pound squatter. He absolutely abuses safeties and linebackers. This kid is for real. He's going to be an early draft pick. Last two games, MVP of the SEC championship game, 86 yards, two scores, and then 158 all-purpose yards against Oklahoma. Slinging it out for Irv Smith. Big time tackle in open space. That's going to be very key for these safeties. Kayvon Wallace, one of those safeties, 
they're really good in run cut yes. run stopping the, the pass issues are big but they're really good in run yeah but what's huge is they were able to tackle in space and that's you that's key because Irv Smith is someone they're gonna look to yeah. get the ball to a lot because he's an x-factor he can he's a mismatch for Alabama and has been all year second team all-american big third down and four here for Tunga Bailoa and I'm watching on the other side Jerry Judy in the slot closer to the Clemson side go back near side in traffic that's a tough catch but Devontae Smith is there for the grab first down we're gonna head back down that way too interesting on third down that they decided to play man free and bring pressure uh, Venables must trust his, his corners and his safeties to say we'll match up against Alabama. The, the thing that's amazing just watching from the field level is how quickly that ball comes out of Tua's hand. Right? Oh my God. He got a special release. Another throw, again. Devontae Smith. That got through a lot of traffic, a yeah. lot of arms and bodies to get through. Yeah, he is so accurate, and, and, and the key to being a good quarterback is repetitive accuracy, but the thing that you never, you don't notice because it goes kind of unsaid, is he hits people in stride so they can run after the catch, and it's outstanding in terms of his accuracy and where he's putting this football right now. A little snap to it, I would feel, I would say, right, Chip? Yeah. I mean, he's got every throw in the book. Fresh set of downs from the 42. Timeout. Clemson. Timeout. Coach took a timeout. Coach, okay, time out. So, Clemson. in talking They're about Tungo by Loa, Nick Saban told us, hey, there are a lot of quarterbacks who have these freak abilities, who have great talents, but they can't manage them. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have the skill, another thing to be able to do something with all that skill, and he obviously can. Yeah, when you talk to Trent Dilfer, who had him at Elite 11, the thing that he said way before he even talked about his release and his mechanics is just how sharp his mind is and how he's a one-timer. And you can just tell him something, and he comes back. And, and the great example was the pick for a touchdown. And then we talked about if they ever give it to him again, the middle of the field's going to be open. He comes back two plays later and drops it down the middle of the field where he can process things that match his arm strength, and that's what makes him such a special player. Chip, any, any thoughts on the timeout, the timing of that timeout? Out. I think they just weren't aligned the right way. I don't think they were trying to settle them down or slow them down. I think when Brent looked, they're looking from Brent right here. I think Brent looked on the field and they weren't in the right look. He just wanted to make sure they got in the right look because if they're not in the right look, two of them may score a touchdown on them. So. First and 10, plus 42-yard line for Tungo Bailoa and Alabama. Trailing early, 14-7 in a wild affair for the national championship. Comes another one. Deep shot. Right in front of us, Steve. Irv Smith again down to the 21. You guys talked about it, Chip. Tim, you said Irv Smith is going to be a factor in this game, and he's been a factor on this drive. He is because he's a matchup nightmare. He runs like a wide receiver, but he's big enough to go across the middle like that. A big, tall target. DB chasing him from behind. Safety chasing him too, Chip. Yeah, and... and there's so many weapons out there, like guys like Henry Ruggs hasn't touched the ball yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. Embarrassment of riches for both of these teams, Leaves. Here comes another one. Bit of a low snap. Get it out. Oh, oh man. That's there he is. That's big Christian Wilkins, guys. Get used to seeing 42 involved in some way. He was chasing after two on that play. Well, that was going bad right from the snap. You could see that was going to be a problem for Alabama. And this is where the game's going to be won, it feels like. Can you disrupt these offenses tonight? That's huge, and it's such a positive sign for Clemson because Alabama, one of their strengths, we don't talk about it a lot, it's their offensive line. Yeah. They got two All-Americans at offensive yep. line, and, and they're really good. So if Clemson can get pressure, it's just, with the way they're playing, doing that, it's a great sign for them. Especially on the interior where Wilkins resides. Another running back. Now it's Najee Harris. Boy, they just got a, a ranch of running backs back there. Anybody they want to rotate in, they, they can change the pace immediately. Third string running back. That's their third string guy. That's I, their third I'll string I'll tell you what, Al Alabama got away with a big hold right there. If you look at Dabo, Dabo was almost out on the numbers getting after the official. Uh, that ball got to the edge because it was a big time hold by the right tackle that went unnoticed by the officials here. Dabo let them know, but now this is big right here. It's a big third down, a third and short here, ball on the 11-yard line. On your own, get back, Coach Chip. <laughs> get back. Levy, hold him back, buddy. Loading up the backfield here. There goes Harris again. Boy, he got grabbed quickly by Trey Lamar, the linebacker, but surged ahead. Let's head this way, Chip. Walk quickly. <laughs> 
I don't want to miss anything good, Chip. <laughs> We're on the move. So I love Chip. the fact that Chip and T-Bar are here right now. Can I just say that? I love the fact that they've joined us. We're going to have Desmond Howard come over in a little bit as well. Explosive first quarter. Levy, you got to love this, right down on the sideline for the first time? <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Getting a lot of exercise is my workout for the day. Adam, I told you, I wish I had the Fitbit. <laughs> first and goal from the nine for Alabama. A little misdirection, but it's in the hands of Najee Harris. Reaching for the goal down. line. Gave it to him. They gave him the touchdown. I think he may be down there. It looked like his knee hit before he got the ball over. Yeah, they're going to review this. This will go to review. This will go to review. Each play does, and we'll see if he actually got a chance to break the plane. Let's see here. I want to see him this replay. I think he's probably down. More than likely, he's probably down, but we'll get another look. Where's the ball when any of that... Where, where, where is, where's the ball at? So the ball's still about at the one-yard line. It looks a, it looks shy of the goal short. line at the very least. Yeah, I think so. short. Yeah, I'm with you on that, Chip. This, this should be pretty clear-cut. But this is very interesting. He's going to Najee Harris this early. Yeah. He hasn't done it the entire year. Najee is usually a guy that Nick likes to short. use yep. in the fourth quarter. And, he, he you know, he... He showed that in the past with the Derrick really Henry the using him in the fourth quarter. Touchdown. But Plays maybe because Najee review. is so big and strong yep. that he wants to get him going early to maybe wear down this Clemson defense. Hey, guys, Dabo is giving an ear fill, an earful to the official on his sideline now. He is wearing him out. Is it is it because of what Chip was talking about with that hold maybe? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know if it goes still yeah, back is. to that. He's still, he's still hot about it. Well, you hot. can see Dabo's now walking out of the field. He's still giving it to the official. Yeah, he's, yeah, I mean, he's one, walking one around thing, the perimeter. One thing that our people don't realize is yeah. that head coaches yeah. are outstanding officials. <laughs> <laughs> and they you see, guys are the best in the they, business, they Chip. See the, they see the game in a certain way. It may not be the way anybody else sees it, but we think we know every call. And, and, and uh, you can tell how much that got to him because Dabble's usually pretty good at putting things behind him. But and, and, that was two plays ago. Well, well guys, I, we can see across the field. I can see Dabo on this side of the, the he's, he's on the Alabama side of the Clemson huddle yeah. and he's still talking to two of the officials right now and in reality chip you got the worst seat in the house unless the play is right in front of you on the sideline yeah and, and and this is a great crew from the Big Ten and sometimes they miss a call and that's what happens and you know you got to move on but coaches are very difficult at moving on no kidding yeah. Don't, you don't say. Yeah. You, guys you know, run, so, run sometimes players hold on to it as well. Let's just be honest. <laughs> Timmy, Timmy knows. Here we go. We're going to get the call here. They're spotting it right here. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be short. Yeah, it's going to be short. It's close. It's inside After of review, it. The runner was down at the half goal yard line. Yep. The ball will be placed on the half yard line. It'll be second down and goal. Well, let's see if we can get a, even, a, even a better look. On the ready for play. We're going to head down even closer down towards the goal line and yep. see if we can get a good look at this. We're right on the pylon as well. Right Go ahead and take pylon. it, Leaves. We got a good look here. Second. Our PO view is pylon cam right now. Inside the one. We'll see if that Clemson defense can bow up right here. Have, have we had a stop? Other than the first three and out. Here we go. They break the huddle quickly. Under center. Play Thank fake. You. Got a man wide open for the touchdown. Alabama. When you watch, it's just such a great play. When you break the huddle that quickly, Clemson's trying to figure out where all the eligibles are. The ball is snapped, and then it's a naked rollout. He, he could have walked in himself or thrown it, but it's a really good play call. When you when you get in a tight huddle like that and blitz out of the huddle as fast as you can to the line of scrimmage, trying to trying to identify where the eligibles are, and then the ball's out. That's and, Hale Hedges. They're, they're, they're all on the, the senior from Jefferson City. And he's got the touchdown. And Chip, they were all bunched up on the right side of the line just to clear it out to the left. And what a great job by Tua of hiding the oh! ball. Oh! Extra points missed! Oh! Off the right upright! You could hear that one, the doink oh, no. special! Hey guys, I know we haven't talked a lot about special teams, but I think in terms of the kicking game, Clemson's got a decisive advantage. They yep. got a veteran in Hugel. They got a really good punter in Spires. Young guys for Alabama who haven't been in those spots all the way through, and that's a big miss for Joseph Bulavas, a redshirt freshman. That could come back in a big way. One point game. It's an amazing experience. 14-13, huge miss by Joseph Bulavas, who's missed six extra points this year. Alabama as a kicking team has missed 10 now. That could come back 
Adam Amin, Tim Tebow, Steve Levy, Chip Kelly, Tim. Man, we're going to be rotating guys in and out all night long, but could not be happier to have this gentleman join us. Thanks, Appreciate brother. you guys. Y'all have a good time. See you, Coach. Tim. And we're going to bring in, actually, Desmond Howard here in just a couple of moments. So they're going to get switched in and out. They'll get ready to go. Des is going to join us. Des is, Des is ready for all this. He's going to chill out. He's been sa hanging out on the Alabama sideline here. So I'm excited to join. I get one Heisman Trophy winner and then another Heisman Trophy winner. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Hey, Chip, we talked about the field conditions. Yeah. The turf is not supposed to be good here. Have you noticed anything early on? I think they've done a great job. I talked to the groundskeeper, Matt Granary, before the game. He felt like it was going to be a really good surface, and it looked like it's held up here so far. Trevor Lawrence and Clemson with a one-point lead after the missed extra point. Third series. Lawrence on the rollout and throwing, oh. and that was nearly intercepted. Ooh. That was a hell of a break by the defensive back there. It was just a naked rollout to Trevor's left. It was a really good throw by him, and it was spot on, but the DB broke on the ball. Really good vision by the by the corner and making a break on it. it there's some speed on that Alabama defense. But Xavier McKinney, he is a big talent. You know, Who is it? That's redundant on Alabama, right? Yeah. Leaves, I want to bring Dez in real quick. Just yeah. in these first 10 minutes, what have you seen so far, man? Oh, man, I tell you, just a scoring fest. No one can stop anyone right now. Obviously, Tua made that first. Uh... Woo, look at that. There's a stop. Uh, yeah, I tell you, stop I'm going to tell, tell, tell you what I've noticed. Alabama is controlling the line of scrimmage on both sides, offensively and defensively. Clemson, they got that pick six, then they got the long pass, and obviously ETN blo broke a couple of tackles in that touchdown run. But when you watch the trenches and line of scrimmage, I'm really surprised that offensively, Alabama's able to move Clemson's defensive guys around up front. And Here I'm we looking go again, Chip. It's third and 14 for the freshman. Yep. Same situation they were in the last time. Here they come. They drop out of it now, rushing just four. It's a great pocket. And as always, they try to go to Renfro. They can't hit him. That was McKinney. an unbelievable coverage by McKinney. He actually took Renfro out of bounds and didn't give him an option. Watch him take Renfro at the top of the screen right out of bounds. Yeah, just kind of rolled him out, didn't he? Yeah, that was a size matchup. McKinney is a big physical corner, and he just got a little bit little bit stronger, a little bit taller, a little bit longer than Renfro, and that wasn't a good matchup for Clemson on that one. Yeah, defensive MVP of the Orange Bowl. McKinney had a great game. Five tackles, had four pass breakups as well. Here we go, man. Special teams, we talked about it. Jalen Waddle does have a punt return touchdown this year. Jalen Waddle averages 15 yards per return. He's explosive, he's dynamic, and he's a true freshman. <laughs> I, lo I just love that tag, man. These are short year old guys. Short putt. Oh, he caught it oh, on the run. Oh, my goodness. He, he got him extra yardage out towards midfield. And he has a lot of heart, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, so a missed extra point, guys. And then you see that, the really short punt and great field position. They're going to take over at midfield. Yeah. And it was a changeup, too. The first punt, Clemson punted straight. That one, they tried to go rugby, I think, to try to keep it away from them. But what a great job by Waddle trying to get underneath that and actually turn it into some more positive yards. So here we go, Tua Tunga Bailoa. Great field position, 48 yard line here. Yeah, just got, you just got a feeling that they're trying to pounce right now. I think he's going to throw again. Yeah, he was great throwing the football in the last series. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he was great at first, and he, he just made that one bad throw behind and led to a pick six. Chip, you're, you're, you're in awe right now as he delivers that one to Judy. That, that ball comes out so clean. It's so clean, and if you watch that route by Judy, he sold the deep route. He may have had, he turned the corner's hips and then snapped it off. Great timing. Look at the separation. Looks like a young Des, Desmond on that right there. <laughs> yeah, he is silky smooth, now that you mentioned it. <laughs> Des would have taken what that to what the house. What though. other That's nice things difference. do you want to say in comparison to our man? There goes Harris again. Najee Harris has the first down. That's what I've been telling you. Alabama has controlled the line of scrimmage on offense and defense. It's really surprising, especially offensively. They're moving Clemson's front four around wherever they want to put them is where they're going to take them. And they look to have Clemson guessing a little bit now. Good mix of the run and pass. It is. And, and, and because two is so good, sticking the ball in the, in the running back's belly and then pulling it out with the RPOs, there's some different things he's doing. Looks like they go pass pro here. They're checking protection, making sure they're on the same page. And Clemson comes a little inside pressure. Yep, there it comes. Clemson. Yep, they're bringing here it. Come. Here it comes. 
God. Oh, oh what a God. catch by Jerry Judy. He pulled it off his shoestrings. Are you wow. kidding me? I Amazing. Am From the angle we had over here, I think he actually tied his shoe <laughs> while he was catching the football. And Tugga Bailoa with Look the pressure that. in his face uh -huh. held it as long as he possibly could. That's great timing all around. And Levy, you think that it looked pretty good in terms of the protection, as good as you can do against a six-man rush like that. Yeah, they, they got a pretty good number on it. I think Tua has a really good feel now. You know, obviously he got caught in that first one for the pick six, but yep. he's in a groove right now. All right, well, Timmy said it too when he was with us. The adjustment that he made right away, just that one bad decision early, he's been sharp since. Hands off here to Damian Harris. I tell you what, I don't know where Todd McShay is, but he may start to change some of these NFL grades for Clemson's off defensive line because these guys right now are getting manhandled up front. Hey, Levy, is he having a glass of wine right now? Is he already on his way to Nantucket or what? He's with, no, he's with the Monday Night guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. He's, got, he's handling all the film room stuff right now. Right now, McShay is trying to figure out, do I need to change the batteries on the remote control? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if McShay's talked yet. I don't know if he's going to get a word in edgewise tonight. Second and four from the nine-yard line. Alabama threatening again. Ashmore closest to us. Go ahead and take it, Leaves. Tongo by Lowe looking this way. I think he was looking at you, Chip, for a call. Blitz comes again. Pressure. Here comes a pressure right up the middle. And they sort of run into the pressure. And then and pick did. up and pick up a yard on the play. Hey Chip, right, walk me did. through this a little bit. When you're when you're playing what Brent Venables is doing, when you're playing, trying to play that chess game, how much of it is just trying to anticipate the tendency on the other side and hoping you guess right? Yeah, one of the things Brent does, and he's the best in the country, is he hasn't called the defense yet. You look at Clemson's looking. He wants to see the formation, and then he knows the tendencies out of that formation and what they're trying to do. Got he it. still holds the call, and now he gets it in after he sees the formation. It's a he's as good as there is in the country at doing it. But the problem is there's too many weapons on the other side. This is a big play on third and three. See if there's a decision to be made Hey, the, hey, the ball might have come short. out there for a second. I thought for a split second maybe the ball had come out. I, I think... I think it's Alabama think, ball, but it just yeah, for a second... I think it Nickel, like it because of the kicking game, I think... Oh, he's, he's, they're he's, short. he's gonna go for it and a lot of this I think sometimes as a coach is you've been nervous the first extra point wasn't good was close the second one missed he doesn't want to risk a field goal he wants to try to go after him right here yeah. hey Clemson is late substituting they had a lot of traffic getting players on and off the field but Bama's taking their time in the huddle so that allows Clemson to get hey, set hey Levy Tungo Vailo is lining up closest to us we got a little wildcat yeah, right now wildcat. Jacobs behind the center for the snap and Jacobs took the snap got oh it. and he's he got the first down. Wow, first and goal. Josh Jacobs. What a great run. That Second effort beat. there. They had him the Second, first time. Second, third effort. You're 100% right. That's what it's going to take in a game of this magnitude, too. They have him stopped right there. But look how he keeps his legs going. Second and third effort. Josh Jacobs. He's the same guy he, uh, last week when we were at the Orange Bowl. He looked up the safety from Oklahoma, number 20, and just ran right through him for a touchdown. Oh, he's he's pumped up, too. He's he's from uh, about 220 pounds, man. He's rolling. Talk about little back under center on the ground. Short. Harris didn't get there. Nope. Unbalanced line. Had an extra tackle over here at the tight end spot. How are you calling this, Chip? Are you just run, run, run when you're this close? No, I think when you have a quarterback that's such a good decision maker, I wouldn't be surprised if they go play action here. Well, they did it last touchdown, right? They had yeah, they that little rollout. Last touchdown. Yep. Watch yep. how quickly they break the huddle and see if they're trying to go up and try to hide the eligibles in this. They did it before. They're taking their time. Yep. They're an unbalanced again. There's a tight end. The tackle over here is playing tight end. I think they're going to run it again. And they moved. They moved. Yep. There's the flag, flag goes. The flag. Yep. And look at Damian Harris. He thought he had the edge right there. He's... He's upset. Yeah, yeah very they, upset. They moved. Very upset. Right guard on this side flinched a little bit. Pretty good seat, huh? Start, uh, you can see everything from here, right? <laughs> it's amazing how well you can <laughs> see when you're two feet away from down. it. <laughs> you said flag before the flag came out. <laughs> again, again, I, again. We, Chip, Chip we, was having we, flashbacks we, to his days right now. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that. Exactly. You're just screaming, he moved. He's, and the best part, it's just like this. No one's listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Except we have the world listening on ESPN, too. Hey, uh, 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 an audience of millions, I know, Levy. Mostly for you you and Kelly, I think, and, and Des. All uh, right. Here we go. Looks like it'll go on the center here. Yeah, this is interesting. Maybe a speed sweep or a bunch. Uh, a little quick screen. Rugs. Good job to get there. That's important tonight, to get there. That was Isaiah Simmons. One of the... Things I noticed too, Simmons plays like a nickelback, Sam linebacker, defensive back. 
but he and two linebackers are the three leading tacklers for Clemson. That doesn't happen very often where you've got three guys in the middle level as your top tacklers. That's how good this run game and short pass game on defense has been for Clemson this year. Guys, this might be the last play of the quarter. It's ticking down with 10 seconds left. Yeah, they're fact, take time. They don't have to snap it, I don't think. They're not going to snap it. Chip, thanks for stopping by. I know you want to stay. It was a good time, right? You want to hang out, right? Yeah. <laughs> this is the best seat in the house. The I'm telling quarter. you, buddy. You can still stay, but we might have to take the microphone away from you. That's all right. JV, JV will do a really good job. Jonathan Vilma is standing by. We're going to make the long trek down the end of the field with the football. And this is a spot Clemson's defense would love to have Dexter Lawrence, and they do not. We'll see you for the second quarter next. Just in time, Jonathan Vilma now joins me. One of you we have right here. It's third and three. The ball on the three. And again, this is where you'd want Dexter Lawrence for Clemson. This would be his spot to stop that run in the middle. Of course, he's watching on television, probably on ESPN, too. Yeah, probably watching us. <laughs> Definitely. 100%. <laughs> Levy, the plug master. I love it, baby. Oh, that's right. Plus formation to the right. Right. Oh, it's a little pitch! Blown up! Little pitch, it's broken up! Austin Bryant rushed in there, Leaves. Bama getting a little, perfect. A little fancy there face. down by the goal line. Oh, yeah, so uh, I'm surprised that Alabama went with that shovel pass as opposed to just running the ball. They have been consistent running the ball up the middle. Really has Clemson on their heels the whole drive. Got a little cute right there. Everything was perimeter, perimeter, and then that shovel pass. Rather see them just pound it in like they've been doing. Here's Bolivas on now. Leaves, he hasn't missed a kick since the Missouri game that you did. A field goal. But he missed an extra point earlier. You wonder yep. where his confidence is. Oof. And the two officials look at each other and say it's good. Adam, could you see? Was that close? It was it very. Leaves, it slid in inside the right upright, and it was not a high trajectory. So that's what, and Des, that's what scares me a little bit, like we talked about. I think Clemson's kicking game is better. It's just better. At least it's less shaky and that scares me if the trajectory is low like that you're right about that and you know in a close game like this that can come back to haunt you later in the game missing the extra point like he did earlier normally that comes back to haunt you yeah you always wonder about the the mental temperature of a kicker in a critical oh. game you miss an extra point exactly you, you know you know it's one thing to say hey forget about it his teammates tell him that and yeah course, that's not humanly possible it's not and what i always did was leave them alone they got to figure <laughs> it out on their own <laughs> they're, they're, they're like they're like, they're like some encouragement. Listen, this on. is what happens because in practice we left them alone so in the game the last thing i'm gonna do is start talking to him and messing with his psyche so he's got to figure it out on his own the, enfor the enforcers in hockey right <laughs> the football world is dealing with the grieving of cody parkey right of the bears so everybody's been talking about the the mental makeup of the kicker in critical yeah. games like we saw in chicago yesterday what the awful things he's had to deal with now ever yeah, since true. that. Yeah, well, as fans, they need to get over it. Right. Okay? You've had players that miss tackles, you miss catches. Oh, look at this. The kickoff out of bounds right by us. Hey, man, wow. field position is too important in a game like this. And, it really is. And, and I, I think if you're a kicker, you're like a referee. You don't, you don't want your name to be said Free other kick. than when you're getting identified. That, that's Chicken full of us again, so it's exactly what we're talking about. You wonder where his head's at, misses the First extra down. point, yep. barely gets the field goal, and right back kicks it off out of bounds. Yeah, only person that can talk to him is Saban. He has to pull him to the side and calm him down because a game like this with players as talented as Clemson has on the offensive side, you can't give up field position. And Adam, you've been on this all along, talking about the kicking game, how it could come out of that. And, you know, one of the rare things that doesn't go Alabama's way is that kicking game with the extra points all season long. And as you've seen it for the last couple of years, they haven't really had a solid kicker for quite some time now. No, they really haven't. They relied on their defense a lot, and then guys on their special teams as returners, but not a, not a field goal kicker who can uh, win a game for you late. Uh, there's going to be a penalty flag yeah, flag here. In late. But you know, Steve, I'm, I'm still very surprised by the offense of Clemson. They're not testing Alabama up front with the run game. Travis Etienne had a nice, tough run yes, for the touchdown, did. but they haven't Pass gone back to that. Defense, number four, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Des, what do you want to see offensively? You just heard Vilma talk about it. Yeah, Jonathan, I think um, they've shown Alabama's defensive front a little bit too much respect so far. Agreed. You can't, you can't come in this game calling a scared game. You have to attack this front, use your, 
use a guy like Etienne on counter plays, misdirection plays, get these guys to go a little east and west and then attack them north and south. And yes. they're passing again, guys. Yeah, underneath they go to Tavian Feaster. Set up the screen nicely. Wow. It worked out all right there, the perimeter game. It worked out. It was a yes, nice sir. play call where you're still getting the running back involved as opposed to having Trevor, Trevor Lawrence look for and watch the DBs and look for the passing game that's open. Give him a quick one. It's similar to the run game. And leaves it's right in front of us here on first and 10 for the 25. Lawrence on the keeper. Ooh, took a that, shot that time. That is not what you want to see 16 doing. Mac <laughs> Wilson coming in and giving him a shot. No, you do like not want to see 16 Ooh. carrying the ball. Yeah, Dez, they're, they're trying to run the ball with the wrong person. So I, I, <laughs> I want number that's nine. Wilson. You want no. number nine, not number 16. I don't, right, I don't think we're going to see that play again tonight. <laughs> you don't run a one, want to run into Mac Wilson. No, no sir. You don't. So they start in the empty set. Now they rotate to that one back set with Feaster in the backfield on second and nine from the 23. Little read option there, and it's Feaster again inside the 20. So they set up in the red zone. This is where Clemson was pretty good during the season. Pretty solid. When you're scoring about three quarters of the time as a touchdown, pretty good. 77% in the red zone for touchdown this year. What you see they're doing now, they went a little east and west. They went to the screen game on the perimeter, and now they ran inside zone. They're trying to tire out Alabama's defensive front. Right in front of us here at the 19, third down and five. ETN's in the backfield. Lawrence backing. Got a man on the sideline, T. Higgins. And he's inside the five-yard line, first and goal. And I love it there. The game plan is working very well in this series. They're tiring out that defensive front. You notice, Daz, how much time Trevor Lawrence had to scan the field, wait for the over route, the crossing route to come. He puts it on the money for an easy first down. And I tell you what, when you look at Alabama's defensive front, they don't have a lot of depth. They can't no. rotate seven, eight, nine guys. Yep, I'm watching them right now. Look how long it took them to get down their stance. That's when they start getting windy. You can yep. attack them now in this run game. First and goal. There goes ETN. There he goes. Pounding his way forward. Look at the power. Didn't get there. Short, short leaves. I love it. Just short of the goal line. That was somewhat similar to his touchdown run. Second effort, third effort. Couldn't get there that time. I love it. Didn't get there that time, but look how many people it took to get him down. Now let's fast forward to the third quarter, fourth quarter. That will be a touchdown. And Levy, yes. you, on your side of the field, you got Renfro on that side. Yes. That intro, and Amari Rogers on that side, too. Renfro's in the slot. Go to Travis Etienne again. Touchdown. He, oh, walks in. he walks in the end zone. Like I said, that defensive line for Alabama yep. is starting to get winded. Now it's up to Clemson's defensive line to step up because yep. they haven't looked good at all this game. Yes, they're already winded. We're, we got, we're 12 minutes left in the first half. They're already winded. <laughs> <laughs> right? exactly. How about, how about this? What shape are they in? It was the most points scored in the first quarter of a championship game in the BCS or the playoff era, and they haven't slowed down yet. This is, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is going to be a shootout. Again, two of the top five offenses in the country. No, I guess we shouldn't be shocked, even though the defenses are good. Hugel's extra point, pretty clean. 21 to 16, Clemson in front. Des, my man, I know you got other duties. Yes, sir. Appreciate your time as Thanks always, brother. Thank you. Have some fun tonight, all right? Clemson's got the advantage. More field pass on ESPN2 when you come back. Thirty-seven points in about nineteen minutes or so. How about that for the national championship game? ESPN two field pass. You got Steve Levy and Jonathan Vilma. They're on the Clemson sideline. Adam Amin with Gene Chizik here on the Alabama sideline. I know you know these coaches so very well. You've been around oh, yeah. them so often. What have you seen? What do you think is going through the heads of Nick Saban and Dabo Swinney with all these points on the board? Well, right now they're trying to figure out how to stop each other. Yeah. Because right now that's been a problem. You know, it started out where Alabama. Other than a couple of big explosive plays, right, the pick six, and then the third and 14, you know, on the on, when they split the safeties, Alabama's been controlling it. But now Clemson just came back with about an eight-play drive, but it was all started by sloppy stuff, Adam, the kick out of bounds. Yeah. Give them good field, field position. Field position, yep. Yeah, then you get a pass interference call, things like that. That's what drive coaches nuts because those things don't have to happen. Those no. are careless mistakes. Head down this way, 
We'll start it up here, Leaves. You guys are on the move. Yep, We've got the ball good. right in front of us at the 25 after the fair catch. Josh Jacobs on the carry. I love how Jacobs moves. He uses his size really, really well. Yeah, you know, he's got such a, a, a good combination, Adam. He's got power. He's got great vision. He's big enough that he can get out in the open field and outrun you or yeah. run you over. He's, yeah. got, he's got those things that, you know, you're looking for a powerful back, a guy that's got it all. And he's really come on and emerged these last couple of weeks as well. Yeah, the, Big game last week. MVP of the championship game in the SEC. Huge game, 158 all-purpose yards against... Oklahoma in the semis. Tunga Vailoa had more touchdowns than incompletions in the semifinals against Oklahoma. Right back to Jacobs. You know, Jonathan, I know you're, you guys are on the move, but I know you were talking about trying to wear down the defensive fronts. Is that, do you, do you think that's what we're seeing a little bit of right now? Well, I'm looking at the defensive line for Clemson, and they really need to find their own. I, they look like they're out of sync. It's not a matter of wearing them down. It's a matter of Clemson defensive line just not getting off blocks. Now they're starting to finally get into rhythm, starting to get off blocks. So now when you wear them down, we need to see more checkdowns. We need to see more play-action pass. you got to get them running east and west as opposed to just coming off, getting off blocks, and making tackles. That looked like it was, sh it was ruled short. Alabama's offense is at the 35-yard line right now. Listed at fourth down and one. How about this roll of the dice, Gene? Yeah, it is rolling the dice because I'm going to tell you something. This Clemson defense what a line, they can go through and hit you on a negative play. Yeah. Hey, they're second in the country in tackles, tackles for, for loss. loss. Only, hey, you know who was number one in TFL? Vilma. Yeah. The U was number one. Clemson number two in the country. I, I, that was I love that you. plug. I love that plug, but now's not the yeah. time. <laughs> Jacobs first down. Wow, what a roll of the dice. Yeah, it leaves. At that point, you know, if you're at the 40, the 45, you can yeah. see going either way there. Yeah, but Steve, look how the game's been going. Yes. No defense is stopping the other the other offense, so you've just got to keep pounding with that offense. It's yeah. one of those games where he'll be mad at the offense for not executing as opposed to defense for not playing well. This is an uncomfortable position already for Alabama. It's the yeah. second time all season they've trailed in the second quarter. But think about that. They weren't in any games except the SEC championship game yep. when they had trouble against Georgia, and here they find themselves trailing. Jacobs again leaves. Pounding his way. They're leaning on Josh Jacobs, junior out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'm with Jonathan, though. I'm looking at Clemson's defensive line. I see hands on hips. Yep. That's the first thing you look at when yeah. it looks like they're gassed, right? They're starting to try to sub and get some other guys in there. Yep. But the hands are on their hips, and you look. Don't think they're not seeing that from Alabama up top in the booth. They're saying, look, these guys are gassed. Let's put it. That offensive line averages about 315 across the board for, off for uh, Alabama. And they're leaning on dudes right now. Second and short, they're out of the gun. What a cut by Jacobs. Wow. Oh. And he slips down. I don't think he was taken down. He slips down across midfield. What a cut. That was a heck of a cut right in front of us, guys. That was awesome. That was. And Steve, Adam, Gene, I'm telling you right now, Alabama is setting up Clemson's defense for a big play. Right now, they're waiting for Brett Venables to call a blitz because he knows the defensive line can't stop the run. As soon as he does, they're going to go over the top with the play-action pass. Yeah, Tua hasn't tossed it on this drive just yet. And I'm, this is it's shot, coming. This is shot position, too. You got a fresh set of downs after in the plus territory. Yeah, and the other thing, JV, because I agree with you, it's coming soon and look if you bring a pressure Here and they pick the it up there and is. they go right over the top oh, oh intercepted by Trey right in front of us it's down the sideline the other day Trayvon Mullen wow game changers guys game changers that's a game changing play right there we said it he was gonna go over the top they came with the blitz hell of a play right there hell of a play you know, we just walked all the way down, Levy. We got a nice uh, <laughs> nice walk. I think we got to go back down the other way now. Yeah, go get your exercise. We're going to stay right here. Go get your exercise. <laughs> Look, we know turnovers are always going to play a critical role, especially in a championship game. Yeah. Turnovers and special teams so important. And just when Clemson are the hands on the hips, right, you were worried about them wearing down, yeah. they get the pick. 
They've made the two critical plays that they need to defensively. The yeah. ultimate equalizer is always takeaways, takeaways. They got seven points off one. Hopefully Trevor Lawrence and the offense can turn into another seven points. And Trayvon Mullen, think about that. So, in essence, that could have been just a punt, right? Yeah. But because it's a great return, yes. they have excellent field position out at the 47-yard line. First and ten for Trevor Lawrence. Keep it on the ground with ETN. How about that two leaves? Trayvon Mullen hadn't had a pick all year. And I know I know that wasn't like he wasn't cutting off a route or something like that. I know it was a little bit of an overthrow, but what a time to find your first pick of the season. Well, the other thing you got to remember, what has Alabama killed people with when they catch the ball and they carry it? But you know what's happening right now? Clemson's keeping everything in front of them. Yeah. Tua had to drop that ball right between two defenders if it was going to be complete. So that was really good coverage. And again, great play. These are game-changing turnovers. We saw it in the first quarter with the pick six. Lawrence to throw. He's looking at Renfro on that out route and a good tumbling catch by the veteran. Man, <laughs> how many Hunter Renfro jokes did you write for this one, Levy? Just out of curiosity. Hey, listen to this. Just, hey, guys, listen to this thwack. Just listen to the sound effect on this microphone. Get ready. Hit me. Nice and clean, right? One word. Access, people. Access. You're not getting this, you're not getting this on ESPN News right now. <laughs> not to rail on McShay too much in the Monday Night Football, guys. But <laughs> you're not getting this on, on E! News. There's third and two. What Four. are you going to do, Trevor Lawrence? He finds Hunter Renfro again. Boy, what a safety valve Hunter Renfro's been the entire time he's been at Clemson with three or four different quarterbacks. Uh, he's a clutch guy. And look, you know, you can call him a possession guy, but he's also a big play guy as well. But you know what? You know what I love? Clemson right now has found their niche in this passing game. They're running a lot of crossing routes. They're punching receivers together. You saw that happen when Ross caught that crossing route down here. Right. Going in on the last score. That was a huge 33. That was a must-stop situation for Alabama. And they're doing a great job with really picking apart this Alabama secondary at the right times. Everything Gene, right now is time. Gene, you know what I love right now? I love watching Trevor has Lawrence. For one play for his coming off. Trevor Lawrence Second was down. clearly taught during the time of practice up to this game to get the ball out quickly. Yeah. And he's been getting the ball out in rhythm. Whether it's incomplete or completed, he's not going to hold on to that ball too long and allow for that de defensive line of Alabama to get to him. And I think that's really starting to frustrate that Alabama secondary because they're saying, man, we're used to seeing guys on their backs. We're used to seeing sacks. What's going on? That was a big crowd play. wanted a penalty yeah. there on Patrick Sertain, the outstanding corner, and didn't get the call. Yeah, I was just going to say, leaves right here. Oh, oh that up in the air. air! Oh, it was caught by Clemson! What a job of sticking with it by Feaster there. Wow. That could have been disastrous, too. I, I know Trevor Lawrence wants to have that pass back. He was trying to throw it away, underestimated the athleticism right there, and then, of course, he's, oh, there we go. Joined by a special guest. Anthony Jennings on the tip here. Watch that. Well, okay. Oh, hey, Tiger. Tiger's with you. How about that? All right, what's going to happen here since I know you can talk, right? <laughs> Third down and seven at the 31-yard line. <laughs> Watch the shallow crossing routes here again. Lawrence running out of time. There's the crossing, crossing route. route. There He's it is. got his man, Amari Rogers. And Amari Rogers sets up first down and goal. I love it. You're bringing the good luck. I love it. Great play call, by the way. Great play call. Offensive <laughs> Jeff Scott, Tony Elliott, and you. Yeah. Man, Gene, I know you love this. Watching the quarterback stay firm in the pocket. He slides up, slides up instead of skating out of the pocket. Not worried about the rush and throws an absolute bullet. I love it. Levy, I'm right here, buddy. The wall's on our hash mark. Near side of the field to us. Six-yard line, first and goal. Trevor Lawrence with ETN in the backfield. I'm watching ETN. He's going to get the ball. It was a read. ETN got hit. Good call, Vilma. I tell you what, John, and I think we're going to see some of the same here coming up. Look at these squeezed and bunched in formations. Yeah. The last two third downs, that's what we saw. One was on a shallow cross. The other one on the third and seven was a little bit deeper cross. But watch them to condense these formations and start getting these same crossing routes yep. that you saw earlier. Yeah, because all three of the main targets are on the far right. side from us. Now they're going to motion Rodgers, keep him on that side of the field in that bunch. Lawrence with that pitch Double to ET. Oh, shovel! Right up the middle on the 
shovel to Travis Etienne. That was the exact same play Great that ball. Alabama yes, ran that's against right. Clemson. Clemson sniffed it out. They got the, the, the tackle for loss. And we yeah. said Bama was being too cute. Well, when you score a touchdown, it's They're exactly how you throw it off. It was a great play call. Perfect. Hi, hi, play call. Hindsight's a wonderful thing in our business, isn't it, guys? <laughs> this is a great play call, guys. I'm going to tell you what. This down here in the low red zone, yeah. he acted like a sprint out. They widened with it. They got the defense to widen, and they just pitched it out there. That is a great call. All right, let's have some more fun with extra points, shall we? Greg Hugel on point, as he has been just about the entire season. He hadn't missed an extra point, in fact, until the Notre Dame game a couple of weeks back. But more points, 44 of them combined between the two teams as we played 10-plus minutes here in the second quarter, 28-16. Listen, I don't think this is really going to phase either one of these coaches because they've both been in these spots before, but the explosiveness isn't going away on ESPN2. It, they're a little more uh, reserved, I think, on our side of the field. We're I wonder right why. Bama fans right now. I, I wonder. It's just a, it's a little reserved. They're trying to keep their spirits up here. But yeah, they're, they're good. Look at the other side right there. They're, they're actually yelling at Chiswick right now. I think I think more than anything else. Is it good or bad? That's I'm not I'm sure, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I want to look. <laughs> We're going to step aside. 438 left here in this first half. 28-16 Clemson. Traditional game coverage on ESPN. Stick with us on ESPN 2's Field Pass. With Expedia, I saved when I added a hotel to our flight. So even when she grows up, she'll never outgrow the memory of our adventure. Unlock savings when you add select hotels to your existing trip. Only with Expedia. Free. Free, free. Free, 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 free. Free. F. R. E. E. Free. Free, free. That's right. TurboTax free is free. Free, 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 free. Adam Amin, Gene Chizik, we're on the Alabama sideline up top. Down to the bottom, Jonathan Vilma, Steve Levy on the Clemson sideline. A lot of scoring here in the first half. Gene, you told me in the break, this is huge. This drive coming up for Alabama. Right now, Clemson has all of the momentum. So there's no question that this drive is huge for two reasons. One, they've got to keep and sustain a drive, okay? Unless they hit an explosive play for a touchdown, they've got to keep the ball. Right now, Alabama's defense is on the ropes. They can't stop them in the run and they're struggling stopping them in the pass game. They need to keep the ball, sustain a drive. There's only four minutes left, and try to give Clemson very little time if they get the ball back offensively. And it's a tongue of Iloa pass to start this series. What's interesting to me is Judy gets tackled by Terrell. Alabama's outgained Clemson here in the first half, but two turnovers have been pretty impactful. The first one was a pick six. The second one set a pretty good field position for Clemson. Yeah, which is really ironic because Alabama's defense is known for the turnovers, That's right? right. Hey, in the last 58 games, they've created 97 turnovers, 22 for touchdowns. They didn't have one last week. They don't have one this week. Yeah. You see Clemson doing that, and we know that turnovers are game changers in championship games. Najee Harris on that run, guys. That's a first down yardage, and they just put a tweet up on the scoreboard, guys, here at Levi's Stadium with, yeah. from, from Ocho Cinco. He said, this is going to start to resemble the Chiefs-Rams Monday night game with all the points in it. So Over 100 points combined, most in NFL history. In that we can game. only hope. 
We can only hope. Hey, we, we, we at it more of a lack of defense. That's what I'm looking at. Levy, yes. I know this is new for you uh, on the sideline. We've been we've been lucky. We've been spoiled the last two years, man. As Harris gets dropped in the backfield by Simmons. Well, there, there's some defense for you. You know, it's interesting on the sideline, Steve. But we're we're over here with Clemson sideline. The attitude is very been there, done that. They, you don't see anybody that's too excited, uh, over emotional. Everyone's pretty calm, pretty reserved. It's like they've been there, done that, expecting to win this game. I keep looking for Venables and see if he's getting pulled back. Oh, you know he's getting pulled back. He's, he's the only excitable. one. He's, <laughs> he's excitable. I'd be surprised if he wasn't getting pulled back right now. <laughs> Another run play for Najee Harris, trying to make that cut. It's interesting how they're going, they're going to all the run plays right now, and I don't know if that's how you calm down Tua. I think to get Tua back into it, you got to just keep throwing the ball, get him into a rhythm. Right yeah. now, Tua is completely out of rhythm, which is why he's forcing the issue when it is a pass play. Are they setting up a shot, too, by, by the run game? They are. Unfortunately, it didn't work last time. Yeah. And so now we got to see, are they going to try it again? Is it going to work? Is Tua going to make the right decision yeah. this time? Third down and six from the 45-yard line. Two and a half to go. Still three timeouts for Alabama. Back to throw. He doesn't see him. Oh, he's hit, and the ball comes out. It's recovered by Ross Pierce Baker, the center. Wow. And man, Levy. Jonathan, that hit was like right at the knees of Tua, and instead of going back, he kind of went forward. That was a hard hit. That was. The timing was absolutely perfect. We watched him. He was almost disguising, and as soon as he timed it up with the, with the snap, yeah. he was able to come right knifing underneath. Nobody match. saw him. Thank God yeah, Tua didn't get hurt. And everybody's worried about the ankle, right? That could happen on yeah. any play. That's yeah. right. I believe we will see Jalen Hurts play a somewhat significant role in this game. And again, the fumble being recovered by Bama is critical. They already have two turnovers in the game. Big part of the reason they're trailing. Wow, that Mercedes-Benz halftime report is coming up right here on ESPN2, part of our field pass with Adnan Verk. Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer. Here you got Adam Amin and Gene Chizik, Steve Levy, Jonathan Vilma. The pressure coming from Clemson again. They get the sack on Tua, and Mike Bernier has to punt away, Levy. Mari Rogers is back for it. Singles for the fair catch. He's got a whole lot of crimson in his face. Yep. And so Clemson will come back on offense. Yep. And will start at about their 21-yard line. Already enjoying a 28-16 lead. How much are you surprised by what we've seen so far? I'm only surprised by the turnovers. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised that Tua has, has seemed actually very immature in yeah. his decision making. Uh, the way he's throwing the ball is very careless with the turnovers that led to the 14 points. That's the reason why Alabama is losing right now. Um, aside from that, we've seen explosive offenses. We've seen the running backs run the ball. Uh, offensive line, both sides have done a very good job. It's the turnovers that are killing Alabama. The question, he, and well, very nearly had another turnover there. Yes. Fortunate that the center was able to fall on the football. Here's Lawrence to start from the gun. Has ETN to his left. Gonna pass, got some pressure. Nice ball. Oh, great. Wide right open. Travion Thompson. And Steve. Thompson right in front of the Clemson bench. I'm right in front of the bench. And this is what I said all along leading up to, to this game. Trevor Lawrence throws on target all the time on, on that back foot. Tua has to hold it, which is why you're seeing the pressure coming to Tua. Well, I'll tell you what, though, JV. I'm impressed with Clemson's offensive line. He, they are forming a pocket for Trevor yes. where he can step up in there without a lot of pressure in his face. Oh, Look at that throw right there. Same yeah. thing. Now it's an overthrow, but he's not getting the vertical pressure in his face from those two big inside guys, and that's where they usually make their hay on defense. They're doing a great job holding up in there. Well, let me let me ask you guys this. How many times have we said the name Quinn and Williams? Very rarely tonight. Early so in the far. game, early in the game, had a negative play, I think a tackle for a loss. But when you're looking at pressure on the quarterback, which Alabama has to have, they're not getting the pressure they need, particularly up inside right now. I Clemson's offensive line is doing a great job from guard, center, guard, position really forming a pocket for him. I bought an obstructed view seat, as you can see. <laughs> 
It's like Fenway <laughs> Park a, for a second. That's a good look right there. Lawrence looked over last second. Lot of, look at his hands in the air. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence is, is visually frustrated. He was looking over the Charge play call, out. and then Clemson. you saw some frustration Final again, out of the forcing half. them into the yeah, timeout. Time yeah, out. it looks like they were going to switch the side of Travis Etienne and then run that run pass option. Then they looked back to the sideline. They wanted to change it back. I don't know why they wanted to change it back, but clearly it frustrated and they ran out of time. I'd rather see that, though. Oh, absolutely. And then go into a bad play. So let him be frustrated now. He gets it out. Yeah. Come back. He'll throw a strike, or Travis Etienne is going to get that ball. And Clemson's out of timeouts, No I more believe. timeouts now, Levy. We're just going to point yep. that out. Out. And I wanted yeah. to I wanted to know from Gene kind of how are you walking through this moment now no timeout still two minutes left Alabama's got all three timeouts they could get the ball back if they get two more stops here well I'm good with JV on what he said about that I, I agree if you think you're gonna get yourself in a potential negative play get out of it right now even if you got to go into two minute drill because you don't okay. have enough timeouts look a minute 53 on the clock is an eternity if you're running your two minute drill correctly what they didn't need to do is get into third and long now they've got two downs to get a first down provided they got themselves out of what could have been a bad play second and ten from the 40 yard line for trevor lawrence good pocket for him and he's got a man again in justin ross who is so important and now hey guys there's a flag thrown for i think a personal foul on yeah they're going to tack on 15 yards after this play for the personal foul oh that's a mistake you just cannot make that's a bad late hit by that xavier is. mckinney late hit out of frustration and I, I like what I see from Trevor Lawrence. He is recognizing the defensive coverage to the strong side. Dead ball. As soon as he sees Personal it. foul. They hit out of bounds. Defense number 15. As soon as he sees it, he's going back down. to the other side. Guys, Justin Ross is a significant player in this game for a yeah. lot of reasons. True yes. freshman. He's from Alabama. Those five-star kids don't usually leave the state. And Dabo found a way to get him. You know that sticks in Nick Scraw. Yeah, no doubt about it. Remember, he, he idolized Julio Jones. Growing up as a kid, his best friend is Markel Benton, who's playing linebacker. He's a backup linebacker who plays on special teams for Alabama. But a Bama kid playing against Alabama in the national championship. And, and, game. and how about the, the, the Alabama alum, Dabo Swinney, trying to knock him off? Another again. flag comes in. And a throw Free in play. Offense. Oh, Hunter Renfro almost had his hands on it. I'm going to tell you what, guys. You know what? Clemson right now is taking full advantage of these coverages. Je Jonathan said it earlier. If they're in a too high coverage, they're hitting Defense these corner balls that the corner can't penalty. sink under first and the safety can't get over there. That time they brought a pressure, dropped the safety down on Hunter Renfro, and if it's a good throw, Renfro had him beat by about three yards, and the throw was errant because of the pressure. But again, they're really doing a great job, Hunter Renfro is, of seeing the coverages and taking advantage of the coverages by what he reads. And to your point, Gene, they're going to have to start disguising. First and five. Good Kicking catch up by Ross. The yeah. They're going to have to start disguising their coverages. One, yeah. Trevor Lawrence has too much time. We saw Quentin Williams on the ground right there. Two, he's reading them like a book. If they don't disguise and start to rotate these safeties different ways and start to creep in these uh, nickel corners, these nickel backs, he's going to rip them apart. He's doing it right now. Clock is winding again. No timeouts left for Clemson. I love the aggressive nature. They don't want to sit on a 12-point lead going a half. They want more. Yeah, Not the way get the game's been going, you're going to have to keep scoring points. It's a track meet out there. And guess who? We were talking about him moments ago. When is Quinn and Williams going to get involved again? He gets the TFL on Adam Choice. Yeah, and then he jogs right to the sideline because he's tired. And so now not a lot of urgency by Clemson. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 65 Steve. seconds left, still no timeouts. Kind of taking their time here. Well, the reason why is they're already in field goal range. So now you just want to wear the clock down, knowing that Alabama has three timeouts. You don't want to give them any opportunity. But well, why want to settle for the field goal? You can't. You don't want to go for a touchdown here. Well, right now, time is the most important thing. So yes, you want the points, and you do want to try for a touchdown, but you also don't want to give Alabama any opportunity because we know right. Tua can chuck it 60 yards for a touchdown yep. real quick kick now, return now, anything you, that happened on the back end yes. now on the aggressive front are you going to throw the ball here to go for a first down or are you running it to, to force Alabama to take a timeout and then maybe kick a field goal what do you think I'm, I'm probably looking at some sort of screen here either some sort of slip screen with a wide out maybe the slip screen with the back but right now I got, I'm going to be aggressive in the call right now Lawrence right in front of us out of the gun back to throw here comes there the is. blitz oh, oh he had him Ball right in kind front of, of us. Player screen right there that they had. That thing looked like if he would have caught it, 
he could have made some hay on that. But again, he, look. He had him. It, you know he was looking at his first option and then realized that they left the back wide open. He might have scored. He, he would have scored. He might have scored. There was a lot of green there. And it's funny. From our perspective, from behind the play, it looked like in slow motion. Yeah. He was so wide open. All right, Levy, here we go. About a 37-yarder here. Greg Hugel trying to curve this one in. Clean. Right down the middle. That was clean. And and again, last year it was at what, 13 nothing, Georgia at the halftime break? It was. Any points that you get to try to extend, and this is big, it's still a two-score game technically, but any points you get to try to at least get close down any momentum for Alabama at the end of the half. Uh, does it, how big is this last 50 seconds now? Oh, Alabama's huge. still got three timeouts. Well, it's huge. Alabama's got three timeouts. they got the most explosive wide receiver group in the country. And let's be honest, there are some matchups right now. Brent Venable's going to have to do a good job of figuring out exactly he wa how he wants to really entertain these last 50 seconds, right? If I go after him and I pressure him and they pick the blitz up, I'm going to leave somebody out there that could potentially get exposed to a huge play? Or am I going to step back, make sure that I tackle everything in front of me? I'm not saying rush three, but I'm saying be safe, play two high safeties, don't give up anything cheap. It's 50 seconds left, so it'll be interesting to see exactly how Brent attacks these last 50 seconds. I, I think Batman is looking for any positive. I mean, they obviously yeah. want to score at the end. They need something good to take with them into the locker room, I think. They do. Not only that, they get the ball to start the second half. So it's key for them to get something positive. Three Great points. points. Doesn't have to be seven. Use that momentum and come right back after them in the second the half. The beauty of deferring on the opening kick. And, of yes. course, they come out and, and throw the big pick six the other way, right, to start the game. And I also say the big difference is Clemson knows about Jalen Hurts. He, they've already seen to us. So if Jalen Hurts were to come in in the second half, it's not a surprise to anybody. Hang on. Are you suggesting? Do you think? I'm not suggesting. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm saying that. <laughs> America, not Everyone suggesting. Settle down, not settle down everyone. It's I'm okay. saying that if Nick Saban were to look for a spark yeah. and brought in Jalen Hurts yeah. in the second half, they would be prepared. What's your Twitter handle again? I'm not saying. I don't know. <laughs> Tongue What's of my low to throw. That was oh. off the hands of Damian Harris. Players come together at the end. You know, it's one thing if it's an injury factor. Look, Tua took a couple shots there. Yeah. Maybe the ankle isn't as good as we all think it is. And the other aspect is the possible spark. And another way you can get a spark, and we've seen this from Nick before, onside kick or some kind of trickeration there. Well, a good call they, to start that, yeah. They right. need to generate something positive. They really do. The problem is that Clemson has seen all those trickeries. Yes, they're ready. He did the onside yeah. against them. They're ready for that. Second down and 10 from the 25. Still all three timeouts and 41 seconds left. Well, this feels like a big juncture in this game just to get something. Two is checking to a certain route out here based on the coverage. He's looking in this direction. Pocket collapsing. Going to take off. Yep. Lowers his shoulder and runs forward out to the 30. And yeah, Steve, first time we've really seen that tonight, right, guys? Yeah, and Steve, uh, Gene, you'd like you'd appreciate this. This is the disguise we were talking about. Everyone was up in the line of scrimmage. They really only ended up rushing three players, dropping eight in coverage. That confused two, and then he had to take off. Look at all the time coming off the clock. They're not using a timeout either. Yeah, I, th I think I think Nick Saban might just say, you know what? It's Let's take it to half. Yes, take it to half. They need to reset. They need to start over. Wow. They need to start over. They really wow. do. This feels like, guys, now we're on the Clemson sideline. This feels like a Clemson home game. Yep. They have taken over the field and the stadium. Simply an amazing first half. Well, a lot of scoring in that first, first half. A major explosion, 31 to 16 Clemson. Let's get you to our halftime crew. I'm so happy that we're all together for this one. Adnan Burke, Jesse Palmer, Joey Galloway. Field pass to their, to their crew right now. Thanks, guys. Back in Santa Clara getting ready for second half action. Clemson leads Alabama 31-16. Adam Amin up top. You can see with Jim Mora. I don't know. I got the bottom box. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but I'm with Rod Gilmore. We did the Friday night package when Friday night football. We started day. that back in the day. We were living with Pat Hill and Fresno every single week. Oh, yeah. So I'd love to hear what you think about the first half, but I'm more interested in your second half adjustments. What do you think has to happen? Well, let's start with Alabama on defense. They've got two major problems. One, no pressure on Lawrence at all. And with no pressure, he's got plenty of time and he's hurting them. 
uh, Williams has not been a factor inside. Right. He's been double teamed. So maybe the adjustment is to move Williams around so that you create some one-on-ones and have him become an impact player. Because right now, he has not been. And then they've been hurt on the perimeter defensively. Yeah. So the outside plays have been a real problem for them. Coach Moore, over to you. Well, I agree completely. You have to find a way to shake your best player loose, and you got to play a little Where's Waldo with him. you got to make yep. Clemson find out where he is, and then they've got to find a way to get Trevor Lawrence off his mark a little bit. You know, even when they had some pressure on him, he's finding his groove. I mean, he is really hot right now. Uh, the other thing Steve and I were talking about, and Rod as well, how do you get Tua Tunga Vailoa into a little bit of a rhythm? They're going to have the ball to start the second half. You got to run the ball, which they're doing, but you got to get it out of his hand quickly. Easy decisions, easy completions, maybe some RPO, some slant stuff, which he does very, very well. Right. Get the ball into the hands of your big time playmakers as quickly as you can. And again, Alabama gets the ball to start the second half. No onside kick to open the half, by the way. We were way. all kind of no like record. breathlessly waiting for it, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, touchback. We'll make the long march down the sideline and see what's going on down there. Right it's critical that the ball makes it to us yeah. <laughs> here in a methodical way yep. for Alabama. They've got to have a successful drive here. If they can at least get three on the board, which is a challenge right now with their, their kicking situation. Listen, we were, we were under the goalpost that Alabama was kicking to during yeah. halftime warm-ups, and it was not pretty, no, admittedly. There were a lot of wayward kicks. It was not the prettiest session, so we'll see if that becomes a bigger factor. It already has been. There we go. Damian Harris, big run to start the half. That's what they need. Establish the run, still and then there, right? it'll open things up for Tua. What you saw there is you saw Clemson shift in their line right. late, okay? And they're trying to change points of aim for the Alabama offensive line, but right there it caught them off guard, and they, they had a big game there. we got to keep it going. So it was interesting at the end of the half, Alabama had 45 seconds, no timeouts, but could have taken a shot, done something with three timeouts, wanted nothing to do with that. So yeah. important on that first down to get a big chunk play, and they'll go the same way. Harris again, guys. That's two big plays to yes. get into plus territory. Cross midfield. I'm not sure we saw those two plays in the in the entire first half no. by Alabama. No, no, no. You know, they had two 11-play drives in the first half where they controlled the ball. Not a lot of big plays from Alabama. This week, this uh, series coming out trying to get to the perimeter a little bit more. Good stalling tactic by you because now we don't have to go all the way down there. <laughs> I didn't want to nice, walk. Nice job, guys. Well done. That's, that's my partner, Rod Gilmore. He's a, he's a Stanford guy. He knows how to get around the system. They're pretty bright, those Stanford guys. Coming our way. They try the far side. See, that's what you want to do right there. You have two successful runs, yep. and you go play action. Okay, you go play action. You get it out of his hand quickly to the perimeter. Easy throw and catch into the boundary. We've got a penalty. Yep. And Conversation, Rod, yeah. Rod, what were you telling me, too? The perimeter game was won by Clemson in that first half, too, right? Yeah, but the quick outs were there on that first series to start the game for Alabama, and now they've come back to it. 73. Five-yard penalty. So just when Alabama gets going, down. guys, yeah. that's going to push him back. And again, guess I mean, it's surprising to see it too when it's the guy on the left side of the line, Jonah Williams. Well, it's self-inflicted wounds. You get in a game like this, you're behind. You haven't played behind much this year. All of a sudden, you start to press and you do something like that, and those are drive killers. First and 15 now, still in good field position. I like it when they have Judy in the slot. Boy, he he can go down the field in a heartbeat, Rod. He had the big play in the first half. A little play fake, finally. Get the quarterback rolling. Irv Smith. And that's a matchup I like. You I, I like Irv about Smith? I talked earlier in, the, in the, the day that he's a guy I think could be real, be really, really be a factor tonight. He's a tough matchup. I mean, you put a defensive back on him, and he outmuscles him. You put a linebacker on him. And he outspeeds him. And then you get the movement game going with the after some successful runs, big time. Oh, he was looking for a shot that time in traffic, just kind of slung it away. I think you he was know, thinking Devontae Smith is going to come back to him. Yeah. That did not materialize, and Tungo Bailo has to pick himself up off I, the turf. I, I think Najee Harris was their best back in the first half, and one of the things I would have talked about at halftime, Coach Moore, is getting him more touches in the second half. Oh, I agree with you. 
They went to Herb Smith. He talked about a lot in that first quarter. Yeah. Like three, I think they targeted him three times. For what it's worth, on a prop bet in the desert, the over under on Herb Smith catches was two and a half. Oh, baby. I mean, Levy coming up with the Not me. Crucial Why didn't you know that one? Not me, but people I do <laughs> I want, know I want, cash. I want, now we know what Levy's preparation was like for this game, just, out of, just if you were curious. Two and a half. <laughs> Our side here, Levy, it's Josh Jacobs trying to get some traction. That defensive front, what did you think of their performance in the first half, Clemson's oh, defensive line? I thought they were tremendous, and I know Alabama had some success running the ball, but I just thought that they were stout, they made plays when they need to. Uh, now, they've had to play a lot of snaps. Can they hold up? Right. Can they hold up when we get into the fourth quarter if Alabama decides to just keep pounding them? Because yeah. they a lot of snaps in the first half. Yeah, hey guys, so on here's on fourth and one, and this is that area on the field, right? But with right. their kicking game the way it is, no, you, you go for it here and there. Yeah, there's no yeah, question. You go. Right. Well, well, we've they've seen been getting them go the for it and handle yeah. it. Yeah, and that, that wild, they have, uh, Clemson hadn't stopped him when they've been in the Wildcats. Yeah, they used Josh Jacobs yep. in, in deep territory, too, in the red zone on yep. that fourth and one, on that fourth and short play, too. I think that's what we'll see again. And just to get out in front, guys, we are going to see Jalen Hurts, I am convinced, at some point in this game. Wait, wait, wait. Did you go into the locker room? You got something we don't know. I know some people. <laughs> Nick, well, stop texting me. I'm a Le little busy Le Le here. Levy knows people all over the place but i think we're they always seem to have a package for him and i don't even mean uh taking Tua out i uh -huh. mean just getting him involved in and i think it's something to watch for i think steve i, I see him sure riding to a no i but i think steve's right i think that they set up a trick play last week the way they used both quarterbacks so steve i think you'll see something a double pass something like two that. out here yeah wild well, cap ah, there there he's put him out yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah, on yeah. our side split out as a wide receiver wild cat. it's a wildcat they've used it twice in short yardage it makes sense oh man they didn't need a whole lot. It was a really short fourth and short, but even that was pretty well, close. When you get penetration on a straight-ahead play like like Clemson's defensive line, that and you make the running back dance a little bit in the backfield, whew, it gets a little bit dicey in the, on those short yardage plays. And, guys, the drop-off, uh, it was a great number that our ESPN crew gave us. There's not a lot of drop-off when Lawrence is gone. It's about a yard and a half per rush when Lawrence is on the field. Even without him, it's only about two and a half, and that would still be number oh, two in the country. So I mean, that's still pretty point, good. Yeah, 2.4 for the year. That's unbelievable. Incredible. Tua back to throw. Trying to step away from pressure. Rifles through the hands of Devontae Smith. Oh, he was right in the middle of the field. Exactly right. That's the perfect call. Uh, right through his hands. Well, he had a couple of options there. When Tua has time, these receivers are running free. I mean, he had Judy out there also. Rod, that was a simple ET stunt, which means yeah. the, the tackle's up, the end is under. Every offensive line in college football, high school football, should be able to pick that up, and the yep. Alabama couldn't pick it up. I, nope. I don't understand that. Nope, struggling with it. At the 38 of Clemson is the opening drive of the second half for the Crimson Tide, down 31-16. Harris running again. That's a solid run to set up a makeable third down. You're, you're still going to need Damian Harris and Najee Harris, Josh Jacobs to do a lot of damage, I would think, to help the passing game in this. Oh, second. absolutely, and that was a really good call. They ran away from the pressure, so they ran to the soft spot of the defense. I think that uh, they were anticipating pressure. Uh, Clemson was anticipating the throw. They brought pressure, and Alabama had a good call on to run away from it, so now they get themselves into third and one. And I say if they don't get it here, they go for it I think again. they go for they it. They don't to. make it. They have to. Bama's two of seven tonight on third down efficiency. They're back in the Wildcat. Go to the edge this time. Boy, he makes such great cuts, Josh Jacobs. He does. And hey. you get him the ball quickly back there when you snap it directly to him. And what the Wildcat does is it gives you an additional blocker that the defense can't account for. Right. Because you, all of a sudden your quarterback now is a defined runner. And you can't gap it out unless you bring your free safety out of the middle. And that can be a little bit dangerous. Jacob's very comfortable in that spot. He was a Wildcat quarterback in high school. So he is used to having the football in his hands. Well, how confident are you if you're Clemson in bringing pressure? Well, they're going to bring it here, it looks like. Uh, every time they've done yeah, it so coming. far in this game, they've been hurt by it. They bring five on this one, guys. Devontae Smith gets hit hard. That's a tough shot from Trayvon Mullen. Took it up high, too. Yep. 
Yeah, see, with, with the pressure, they wind up having their safeties involved in coverage, and their safeties cannot play with these Alabama receivers. Well, we saw that on the, the first long touchdown. Yeah, yeah, they got the matchup they wanted versus quarters coverage. Well, Rod, we were prepping Texas A&M for the Gator Bowl. Texas A&M attacked the middle of the field against yep. Clemson early in the year. Look at Henry Ruggs' way for a second, now coming across underneath the Smith. Oh, the ball, and the ball comes out. out, and Smith's able to fall on top of it. Oh, wow. I don't know. That's uh, that, And it might be an incomplete potentially right I'm sure they'll look at this but th th whoa that play this can fire. go three ways now they're it's calling it a catch on the field or down by contact let's see yeah that's a catch he made what two or three down. steps I, I, after might, he had it yeah he might be down I think it's it's close when the ball was coming out when Ooh. the knee goes down right about there I, I'm that sure you, out. You're yeah. right. I, you can make an argument that that ball could, was on its way out before see if they the buzzed out. out they need to buzz this one not yet not yet no, I think it was a catch, guys. Here it comes. Oh, here it comes, huh? Okay, this is my issue right here. What's you the can issue? Still be right. Huge, huge yeah. mistake. Yeah. On the previous play was huge the mistake. Fumbled the ball before Alabama it was down. Right yeah. The play is under you, further you, review. You, you've got to get up and snap the ball. Yeah. You, gotta, you can't. You, got, you can't take your game. time at that snap at that juncture of the of the game. We're gonna step aside. We're gonna sort out this replay, and we're gonna hear from Rod and Jim what they think on the other side. Welcome back. Two things quickly to unpack. Holly Rowe just came by and said that Trayvon Mullen is out of the game for now. Wow. He's their top cover corner. He's dealing with cramping issues. He had the pick earlier. And also to clean up on the field, it was a completion of fumble recovered by the offense. You can say I was right. <laughs> As usual. And, okay. And Steve, I, <laughs> redundant. See, I see Mark Fields, number two, senior from Charlotte, playing his 47th game. Number two's checked in on the opposite corner of A.J. Terrell. So we're back for a big third and six at the Clemson 22. One clap. Two has got it. Throw. Oh, and right nice there. Play. Right nice there. Nice they play. go to Mark Fields on the defensive oh. play. And that's textbook, right? You, you go know to the backup. That is to come off the, the bench cold like that. Wow. And he made a great play. You called it. Veteran move right there. And, and, and that's the veteran corner. Eh? Yeah. Mark Fields isn't new to this. All right. He's been around a long time. That's a clutch. A little high with the offhand, though, Coach. You want that hand down lower. He got away with having it up pretty high. Hey, There's my guy right there. Talk, <laughs> TV talk. That's right. He had to have that hand hey, around the waist, but he got but, away with but it. But at least, you know this. Officials will tell you, as long as you don't turn that guy with your offhand, they're going to give you some leeway. All right, guys. We talked about it. This was a, a factor in the first half. It was rough during warm-ups this is from 40 yep all of us oh they oh, fake they it fake. they picked it up and fake it oh Matt and Jones. they're stopped Matt on Jones fourth and six stopped. okay I, I, they, steve rod why they're in punt they're in they're in field goal safe they why? were rushing the punter they had five guys off the line of six guys off the line of scrimmage waiting for it why out of, out of wow it. why Listen, Nick Saban has rolled the dice a couple times already tonight. Went with Mac Jones, their third-string quarterback, and their holder to try to make something happen. What a stop by Clemson. Wow. That's just a risk. Let me wow. see this you have to wonder what's going through Nick Saban's head right about now. In field goal range from 40, they go with the fake. Adam, Jim, Rod, Steve, what would you think of the call, Jim? I thought it was a strange call. I think it's uncharacteristic to Nick. He knew that they were going to be in a defense where they were not rushing. It was going to be tough to execute a fake, and yet he still went with it. I'm curious if the if the snapper, or the, I'm sorry, the holder was supposed to check out of it and didn't. That was very unusual. You, Jim, you can't even have that, you know. To me, there is no confidence in the Alabama kicking game, and that's why that happened. They were prepared yeah. to do something, and they should not have. You needed points. You needed to keep your momentum going, and Saban talks about calculated risks, calculated gambles. That was not a calculated risk. That was just a risk. You might as well put the ball into his hands and go for it on fourth down. At that point. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's see what Trevor Lawrence has in store now. This is a crucial moment. I know we say that a lot, but this feels like the game's kind of hanging in the balance. A touchdown is like a gut punch. Right, let's see if Clemson can run the ball now. They've only run for 27 yards so far, but they need to get some yardage on the ground. Quarterback keeper. 
Wow. He is dragged down. We've been waiting for some defense by Alabama, and Jennings able to bring him down. But I, but, but I don't care because his hair is glorious. <laughs> I, I look at his hair coming out of the back of his helmet, and then I look jealous? at yours. Oh. I am very jealous. I, you know, listen, the one thing, listen, Steve Levy and Rod Gilmore go back a long way, so you got the, you got, you, you got the, the first car in Levy. You got the old sedan that he just picked up now this year. I haven't seen Gilmore with hair. I want to see a photo, Gilmore. Not going to happen. <laughs> Man wears a lot of hats. <laughs> Lawrence underneath that time, covered up well by the linebacker, Mac Wilson, yep. if they found Rodgers. Bama defense closing quickly there on that play. Yeah, Dude, still, still no eight. pressure. And it's third and eight, Ken. They're right back in the L. Third yeah. and eight. Yeah, well now, now what do you do with Williams? He has not been effective at all. Do you move him around? I, I move him, Coach Mora. They've got him right on the nose. They're in a three-man front, and they're going to run some type of game. I think they're going to ring five here. Right in front of us here, guys. Big third and eight for Lawrence. They brought five. Pressure to the here blitz. Comes. Wow. Wide, Wide open wide across open. the middle. Corner fell down. Justin Ross. See ya. Wow. Gut punch by Clemson right there. Wow. When you decide to pressure and you yep. don't get there, you leave yourself vulnerable on the back end. Your DB falls down, and it is over. And when now you, it makes that fake field goal look even worse. Points off of that. And when you bring the blitz, the one thing that kills the blitz is when you make the band play. <laughs> and that happened. And so now you're Nick Saban. You can't blitz anymore. You give up six. It's not what you need. And adding insult again, he's the Alabama kid that got away. Yeah. Wow. Hey, guys. Our great producer, Mandy Cohen, just gave us a note. This is the largest deficit that Nick Saban has faced as the head coach of Alabama. That Think about that, the success, the national titles, all the comeback games that they've had, including last year. This is the biggest deficit that they've faced. Did this you is see Ross just manhandle that? I mean, put his hands on him. He said, get out of my way, yeah, son. And that's what he did la last game, too. He did that against the Notre Dame secondary oh. for the biggest game. That was the biggest game of his career. And he did it in his freshman season against Notre Dame in the semifinals. And that's a massive play right Look at the Look at Dabo. Look at Dabo. <laughs> Full media timeout. Still a ton of time left. A ton a lot of time. time left. 8.26 left in the third. But you get the sense Nick knew he was in some trouble already. Savion Smith being carted off the field. You never want to see that. The junior from Tampa, and it happened on that that big play, that that last scoring strike, and Alabama finds themselves in big trouble, down 21. Still a lot of time, eight and a half minutes left in the third quarter, but this is an uncomfortable position. How big was that fake? Now, you think about the points that came off of that. You had a chance to get three, you know. It's a 10-point swing then. Yeah. If I've done the correct math. <laughs> Your math is always good. Yeah. I was told there'd be no math. Here's the extra point. Oh, oh my goodness. So it's not a 10 point swing. <laughs> a nine point nine swing, point. if you will. Again, Greg Hugel hadn't missed the PAT all year until the, the Notre Dame semifinal, and now he's missed one tonight as well. But guys, six points. That, you see it on the bottom line. Yes. Six points and 188 total yards in the Sugar Bowl last year in the semifinals for Clemson's offense. I understand it was Kelly Bryant then, not Trevor Lawrence. It's a different offense, but. Man, this is a complete turnaround from one year to the next. Incredible. It really is. And you can feel on the sideline that Alabama seems to be they're panicking a little bit. They're losing their confidence. You, you look over at the Clemson sideline. You see Dabo high-stepping down the sideline. Yeah. Their confidence is growing. And plays like you're just watching right there, you know, you take a, a receiver like this kid, and he shoves your corner, a really good corner to the ground. Safety comes over and misses the tackle, and it's a 76-yard touchdown. I mean, you build on this now. Yeah. Come out and get a three and out. Well, if you're in press coverage, you got to actually press the receiver and get your hands on. You can't let him manhandle you. Uh, you see, my said it, Jim. That was <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my Gilmore's, yeah, let, let, let me let me keep Gilmore for at least uh, at least another couple he, of years. He's, <laughs> he's tough on these guys now. He's tough. Let me, let me at least hold. It's on not easy out there, but come on, you're in his face. You got to get your hands on him. You're right. right. You are right. That's why they call it bump and run. Right. right. Bump him. 
and there's nothing wrong with a little bump and you, run. You don't see nothing wrong with it. No. I enjoy hand fighting myself. <laughs> you're a combat, you're a hand-to-hand -hand combat guy, Levy, I know that. All right, kick's going to be run back. Wow. Out Josh, of the end zone. Josh Jacobs trying to give him a little bit of a spark. Yeah, that's exactly right. They need a spark. They need a big play. And he winds out getting them out to the 30-yard line. Well, I, I think they need a, a spark on offense, but they also need a non-offensive touchdown at some point to cut the possessions and get back in this. They've, they've had five of them this year, Rod. Remember, though, the last two years, they were one of the best teams in the country, yeah. double-digit defensive touchdowns the previous two seasons. But so they're right. playing an offense that, that doesn't turn the ball over a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Freshman quarterback that has four. He's been great. How great is has he been? You don't see that. 21 point game. Wow. Alabama with the football. 8 19 to go here in the third. Starting from the 30. Too early to abandon the running game. Here Absolutely. they come. And they've got the backs to do it. I, I like Najee Harris. He's been so effective this game. What they need more than anything, forget about the time. They need a drive and they need seven points and then you go. So don't worry about hurrying up right now. This is Clemson offense. They will not slow it down. So you've got plenty of time. They will not shorten the game. Yeah, I Good think Rod, you're right. Conventional wisdom say, hey, hurry, hurry, hurry. You're right. They need an efficient drive that ends with a touchdown. This was the most efficient offense in the country this season, and they were the quickest strike offense, or one of them at least, in college football. A little over-the-top shot. And Perfectly the thrown in. football there, guys. Savante Smith right on cue. Togo Bailoa just led him perfectly and dropped it in. Yeah, you know, he's got skills. This is a perfectly thrown ball. He had a lot of protection. And watch, he comes back to the middle and drops it in front of the safety. It's a beautiful throw. Well, it's clean pocket, right, Rod? You talked about it. When you give these guys, both Lawrence and Tonga Bailoa, time, they're going to dissect you a little bit down the field. Yeah, well, and the key there was... It was a quick throw. They got it out. Yeah. Get it out of his hand right now. Don't make him sit back there and think about it. Right back to the run. And that's going to go for a loss. I love their safeties, Rod, in the run game. I know they've been weak at times this year. Tanner Mews got beat in the first quarter on that deep ball. But in run play, in, in run defense, I think these safeties are fantastic. You know where we're yeah. standing? Are you on the 10-yard line, Steve? 10-yard line. <laughs> We have, stop, we have stop, props. Stop taking uh, props, man. <laughs> stop taking people's props. I'm going to talk to the field judge right here in two seconds. Don't, yeah, I turned around. I was like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> Tonga Vailoa on the move. Looking back. Back shoulder. Oh, man. oh on the Devontae move, bro. Smith and, on the Smith move. and Josh Jacobs feel like they're going to have to be big factors. Jacobs was right there out of the backfield. I mean, you can't cover this any better, and you can't throw it any better on the back shoulder. That's a well-covered route. Yeah. What a throw and catch. That's a and linebacker. Throw. That's Trey Lamar who did a nice job against the running back in coverage, guys. That's a throw on the move. That's great. Now you got a nice slot over here. This is the formation I like better for them. They can attack the safeties when they, they've got a slot guy. Wide field. All of a sudden, Jacobs has become the man. That pass is completed down to the 15-yard line. Waddle on that catch, guys. We Two haven't heard a lot from Jalen. Again. Yep. We haven't heard a lot from Jalen Waddell in this game. No, he picked up that punt and got a, little, a few yards, but other than that, really hadn't done a lot. Desmond said earlier on SportsCenter he thought he would be the X factor in the game for Alabama. Slot guy. Well, here they, when they have trips now, you've got a good formation for attacking it over the middle here. Three receivers our side. Two are going to throw. Just too high. Just yeah. too high. Yeah, that was the one. They had the right formation. They got the right coverage. They had the guy open, and he was too high with the throw. Have they hit rugs yet tonight? Have, are they target him there? I'm not sure he has a catch. I don't think he has a catch tonight. I think he has one, one in the first half. Okay. You know, Just too strong on those, there. On that throw over the middle, you're seeing the middle pressure affect him. He's got yeah. big guys in his face. He's got to get over the top, and he's not a tall, so player. He's territory. Not a tall quarterback, and so he's throwing it high. So we got a timeout. Timeout Clemson, guys. Okay, that, that doesn't bother me. Charge timeout. Yeah, it feels like Clemson. a big third down right now for Dabo's defense. Because yeah, if, if, if you hold them here, and I imagine it might be four down territory, you hold them here, man, that's going to be monumental for Clemson here in the third. Lights are on and everybody's home. <laughs> hey, my hands are full right now, okay? <laughs> Alabama has trailed for 53 minutes all season.
53 plays all season. They've trailed for 56 plays tonight. Wow, I just that sounds that bad. Up. I just uh, got that. Yeah. Rare territory. You guys said it. This is rare, uncharted nearly territory for Nick Saban right now. And you always wonder how you're going to respond in a spot. And well, you, you play the next play, but this is two down territory for them right now. Four down territory, Rod? Absolutely. Third down and fourth down. They got to go. Third and four, the 15. Two are looking left the whole way. Yeah, he's looking for Judy, guys. Hey, get, let's give yeah. some credit, too, to A.J. Terrell. I think he's played a really solid game so far. Obviously, he had the pick six to start, but he's had to, he's had tough assignment after tough assignment all night. No and, and Fields is still in there this. as well, guys. The backup Fields is still in there for Clemson. Yeah, but actually, they got away with a hold on that play right in front of an official and wasn't called. Nick, not too happy about that. So here's your four-down territory. I, li I like Waddle in the slot here. Fourth and four. The Clemson 14. Waddle on your side of the field, guys. Yep, in the slot. Smith in motion in the slot now. He's going to try to run for it. Not going to get oh. there. Oh, wow. Not oh. going to get there. I'm on the yard line, guys. I am on the marker. I think he's a half a yard short. Yeah, a little bit. About a foot and a half short. He did not look as explosive or quick as he typically does. He's got that knee sleeve on his left leg. And yep. I, you got to believe his ankle and his knee even a little bit are bothering him. He just does not look as athletic and quick as he normally does. Actually, Coach, I didn't think that was the best decision. I think back to his right, he had a couple of options to throw the ball and get the first down. One was Judy, and I think Waddle was out there. He had two guys he could have made a, an attempt to throw the ball. Rod, I'll tell you this. Uh, Jonathan Vilma made the point in the pregame. He said that Tua Tunga Bailoa is really affected by pressure, and his eyes go to the ground, and we're seeing that. And, and yeah. Rod, you just pointed it out. He did not see open receivers because his eyes were on the rush, and great quarterbacks can't do that. I think he's a great quarterback. He's just struggling right now. Well, Trevor Lawrence takes over now. Long field in front of him. Well, they go right to the ground, and Travis Etienne. If they could take the ball and run it all the way down the field and, and waste the rest of this third quarter, they got to feel pretty good about that. I was going to say, so, you got, yeah. is, is clock a factor at this point? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm curious to see how they play it. Right. Do they continue hurry up with their tempo, or do they just back off a little bit? I mean, not to stop their offense, but just to bleed a little bit more. I think you bleed a little clock, but Rod, you know this. If if you change your personality in the middle of the game and you go away from right. being successful, and you take your foot off the pedal, your players feel it, and they and they don't like it. And here's and some aggressiveness. Oh, right, yep, right there. There is a little bit of aggressiveness going right love back it. to Overton. That I was right it. in front of us, and that was a beautiful throw and a great catch. You Good know, job picking up the blitz, too. Oh, yeah. They get the pressure out there. Look at this. He leans off of him. Perfectly thrown ball. We're going to get even closer here to the sideline. Again, you're watching our field pass coverage on ESPN2. Adam, Jim, Rod, Steve, giving you the access and the looks that you're really not going to get just about anywhere else. This is awesome. It is Awesome, awesome. ETN, it's a loss. Can we change the draft rules and let a freshman quarterback come out? <laughs> How much do you, why, why do you like Lawrence so much? I know there's a lot of reasons, but what sticks out to you, Ron? Well, I like his toughness tonight. I didn't know he was that tough and that he would handle the pressure as well as he had. Physically, I knew he had everything else. I mean, he's tall, he throws a beautiful ball, but seeing his savviness and how tough he is tonight has really sold me. Along those lines, I was with McShay on game day, and we were joking about it. He said if Lawrence came out and Tua came out this year, they'd be the top two quarterbacks, wow. maybe the top two players taken in the draft. But Tua. we're a couple of years away from both. <laughs> yeah, Tua's eligible next season. After, after, next, after season, next season, right. yeah. Lawrence still has two more full years. Think about that. If you're in the ACC, you're in the national spotlight, <laughs> national picture, you got to deal with that guy for two more seasons. Well, let's change the NCAA rules and let him have a hair deal. Shampoo or something. Oh, by the way, yeah. by the way, they asked him what he uses. Pantene. Very simple. Oh, what you use, right? Oh, for the, oh yeah, for this receding hairline. I actually wanted to know what Levy uses for that lettuce. Uh, I use Troy, what our Troy Palomalo used, the head and shoulders <laughs> thing. No flakes on me, fellas. Ah, boy. Th I don't use either. <laughs> Third and 13 for Trevor Lawrence. Taking a shot. Downfield. Oh! oh! What a catch by Justin Ross! Was he in bounds? I think that's wow. going to be the question, but they're ruling it a catch. Wow! That's a one-handed grab. Amazing. Hey, hey, guys, that's the second time we've seen an Alabama defender lose his footing 
And I don't think it had much to do with the grass as much as it did yeah. with the physical receiver play. And that's guys, that's, that is Josh Job, the freshman. Remember who he came in for? He came in for Savion Smith, who went back to the locker room, carted off the field. That's twice now that Ross is just out physical the corner. Yeah. A lot of hand fighting but, there. What a great throw. You talk about a third and 12 whole shot like that. Unbelievable confidence. And, and Rod, about Rod, a, a Rod, loves the, Rod loves the mutual combat. Being in the booth with Rod, I know how much he loves the mutual combat. Between well, that, 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 that's not mutual, though. <laughs> Clemson is whipping these receivers. <laughs> They're big. When was the last time you saw Alabama defensive no. backs get pushed around like this? When did you ever see an Alabama player get manhandled? You just don't see it. No. And you are seeing it on the yeah, edge. Yeah, well, this, that's the one spot. I know they lost a ton from their defense last year, but that's the level of their defense that lost the most. They lost five guys, starters, from that secondary, including their star. That's their nickel, uh, Tony Brown. They lost Mika Fitzpatrick. They lost Anthony Averett, Levi Wallace, all the these players. guys. That's a lot of talent talent that's playing at the NFL level. There is no fear in that young man's eyes at quarterback. Slinging it again, it's Ross. Oh, he lost the ball. All right, they're going to look at this. If if that knee was down, it stays with Clemson, but if that knee wasn't down, that's the momentum play that Alabama absolutely needs. Raquan Davis recovered if it stands. Well, you can see Ross saying I was down. Well, the film will be key here the replay let's see yeah he's down i think he's, he's down very close oh, yeah. We're on the, on the, guess what they think on the alabama well, sideline right now guys. we know the ball can't cause a fumble yeah, yeah the, ground, the ground the ground the ground cannot cause his a fumble. knee is down he's ground down yep. yeah, the 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 ground can't cause ground, yeah and, the, and, and that's a misnomer in the nfl the ground can cause a fumble in the nfl it cannot do so in college football because when you're down by whether contact or not, when your you're, knee or elbow's down. down, you're down. This is a, a, a critical play, obviously. I mean, Bama needs possessions. They are yeah. down three down. scores here. They need the football. I, and I don't think they'll get it here, Steve. I, I just don't think they're going to. No, they're, they're not going to get, get it here. here. Yeah. Rod, you talked about Trevor Lawrence and his confidence. Every pass he completes, it grows. And I saw something there between after the fumble, or, you know, after the mishandled ball there. Went right over his receiver. Hey, it's okay. I mean, he's showing leadership. Yeah. yeah. Poise and control and command of this game at such an early or young yeah. age. It's, I mean, it's, he should, he, he's ready for the NFL. So he turned 19 in he's what, October? He just, he just okay. turned 19 years yeah. old a couple yes. months ago? I mean, yes. We, we focus on his physical attributes most of the year. 6'6 six, six and throws a pretty football. But you're seeing all the intangibles tonight. That's yep. the thing that impresses me. And How about the way that he came back from really – not a great start. They're considered the best players to leave that state. Jameis Winston being one of them and, and Justin Ross. If we expect replay to reverse that call of a lost fumble, it would be about a third and eight at the 36 for Clemson. Nick Saban talked about how they got to play better third down defense when he walked off the field. Telling Maria Taylor we've got to be better. They Clemson six of nine on third down. After review, the runner was down before he lost control of the ball. Will be third down and nine at the 37-yard line. Clock will start. I'm not ready for play. So the Tigers converting Kirk double the percentage of other Alabama opponents this year on third down. You go more than 21 down. I know you got two. You got all those weapons. Can they get after Trevor Lawrence? Can they can they affect him? Something that's been a problem here on third down without Christian Miller. Keep talking about how Dylan Moses, you'll see him on the right side of the defense lined up, trying to help, trying to get a pass rush in. Yeah, 45 sacks on the season for the Tides, zero tonight. They bring five. Lawrence picks up the blitz, delivers. And is that another circus catch by Ross? Wow! Humongous play by the freshman. Well, a great throw and an unbelievable right-handed catch. Are you kidding me? A palm and then he gets the right foot down. That's as good of a catch as you're going to see. By the way, Trevor Lawrence makes that play on third down, throws it, and just hopes it's going to be good enough for Ross to have a chance. He got leveled as soon as he threw that ball. That's big time. Saban jogs down and makes a case to the officials, and Bama will spend a timeout on defense. Last thing you want to do, 21 down, is burn a timeout on defense, but 
he's, he's got to get his guys regrouped. No question about it. I want to go back to a great catch, but I love to see a young quarterback. Look at his eyes. He's, he knows where he's going to go. Watch how he keeps his eyes downfield. Here comes Bugs. Boom. Moses coming in. As soon as he threw that ball, he felt 300 pounds closing in on him. Didn't affect him at all. Kept his eyes, takes the hit, and gives Ross a chance to make that play downfield. Justin Ross at 6'4", long arm. What's his catch rate? He's about 12 feet? Yeah. I mean, that, that was beautiful. Up in the air, right hand, right foot. And a kid who's 19 years old, was in high school a year ago, is taking Alabama's defense to school and smiling about it on the sidelines. Look, there's work to be done. It takes a lot to finish off the tie, but Bama's two possessions in the third quarter have produced some yards, but no points, two stops on downs. And Clemson, if they get this to 28, I know two is good, but it it's deep trouble. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a catch, first down Clemson. There was no doubt about that. Ross said, I had that all the way. You leave the state, Kirk, and you get to hear from the folks back up. Justin says there's people in his family rooting for Alabama tonight. Not immediate family, but extended family. How about, how about six receptions on the 153 yards and a touchdown for the freshman? You got bragging rights when you go home off a performance like this if the Tigers can finish the job. Black running again. ETN. Gets a block. And makes a cut down right near the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal, Clemson. You, know, you, you think about uh, your, your, your defender, and Lawrence is back there throwing the ball. He's, he's 342 yards, throwing, 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 and just when you start to get caught up in trying to get a pass rush, here comes Travis Etienne around the corner to keep you honest for some quick yards and a first down. Haven't done much with the running game. It's just been just a change of pace. Feaster in on first and goal. And they feed Feaster. He knocked down at the five. Etienne twisting his ankle at the end of that last run. Walks slowly to the sidelines. Yeah, his left ankle as he planted it. It looked painful. Travis has run for two, caught a touchdown pass tonight. Broke a conference record with that touchdown total. It's Feaster to the right of Lawrence. And quarterback faked the pop pass, kept it, and got smacked by Moses. A lot going on there. The jet sweep, faking that, faking the, the pitch, and then keeping it. And Alabama staying home. Quentin Williams staying home, leading the way there. Not giving up here. Still trying to fight here as the closing seconds to this third quarter. They've used almost five minutes of clock. They've moved it 84 yards in 11 plays. An effective drive even if they can't find the end zone. Third and goal. Lawrence with the rush coming finds T Higgins touchdown there is a flag down late hit after the touchdown this should stand that kid cannot be 19 years old come on <laughs> I mean it looks like a 10 year NFL veteran I mean he looks like he's been there his whole life back there taking hits making throws and how about these receivers I mean, Ross has made some at that time. It's T. Higgins going up and making a play. How about the circus catches this crew has made? If you go back to the Cotton Bowl against Notre Dame, great catch by Higgins in the end zone. There's Mike Cannon with the explanation. It is a touchdown. And a personal foul late hit after the score. And we'll, we'll go back and take a peek at this, but... What made it really stand out, really stand out, was that they went over the top of Mac Wilson. And that, that's what's, the, that's why the ball was a little bit high, and Higgins had to go up and climb the ladder to make that play. This duel between young quarterback prodigies, controlled by Trevor Lawrence, who checked out that touchdown pass and the catch 
And the jumbo crown just said, wow. 347 yards and three touchdowns for the true freshman from Cartersville, Georgia. No throttling back in the third quarter. They've added 13 points to the lead. The route's going to come from your right, and he's going to work towards the back, but I want you to watch Mac Wilson in the middle. They're playing straight up man. Mac Wilson's freelancing. Trevor Lawrence has to make this throw over top of Mac Wilson because of Anthony Jennings coming in. He waited as long as he could until he makes that throw. Higgins on the outside works across from the freshman, Job, and extends himself. It's 6-4 to go up and make that play, and that's where the personal foul came in from Job after the catch. Look at his throw over top of Mac Wilson, right into the fingertips of T. Higgins. Another look for the AT&T pylon cam. Just make plays, have fun. Namo Sweeney's message was pretty simple, and make history as the Lawrence family <laughs> loves it. Oh, it's awesome. Nick Saban's defense is being eviscerated. Keep in mind, I mean, again, we keep saying that Trevor Lawrence is a true freshman. He's playing two more years of college football. Can you imagine what he'll look like in two years? <laughs> Mentally imagine, and physically. I can't imagine what the other folks in the ACC and around this sport are thinking with the idea of, of him. And by the way, most of those receivers back too. You got freshmen and sophomores, top two quarterbacks. Top two running backs, three of the top four wide receivers. They'll lose, of course, Renfro and Trevion Thompson. Yeah, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> There's people that were frustrated about Alabama and Clemson. You know, these, these teams aren't going anywhere. Clemson's right there right now with Alabama over these last four years. That's a full fourth quarter to come. But a four touchdown deficit touchback after the penalty moved the kickoff up near midfield. Our first UFC fight night card on ESPN Plus coming up Saturday, January 19th. Main event about 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 Pacific. Man and weight champ DJ Dillashaw will be down in weights. Henry Cejudo is the opponent. Start your free trial today by downloading the ESPN app. So there's 21 seconds and then a quarter to go. What can Tua do to begin to chip away? Apologize for any technical difficulties here in our field pass, but the Levy fan club was very vocal about bringing us all back on Twitter, so that's why we're back with you. Tua Tungavailoa going back to work with a deep shot incomplete. Guys, we just saw a fantastic engineered drive by Trevor Lawrence and Clemson, and Rod and Jim, you guys were talking about the tempo and the pace. Yep. You, have to, you have to balance it. Jim, let's start with you. You thought that they balanced it really well. I thought they did a great job. I think if you take your foot all the way off the pedal there, you do a disservice to your team. And I thought that they just managed it perfectly. Great tempo. You know, they were going fast enough to keep Alabama off their, uh, you know, on their heels. But they were going, weren't going so fast that they wasted the clock. They went 12 plays, 89 yards, ate up over five minutes. Huge. Well, it's all going right now for Clemson. They just batted a ball down at the line of scrimmage, but Rod and following along those lines, that's the best of both worlds for Clemson, right? You take the, the air out of the ball, in essence, and score. Yeah, that, that's demoralizing for the players for Alabama. You know, and for Clemson fans, and actually for the country, this really justifies the move with Trevor Lawrence after game four. You could not do this any other way. You couldn't score points and make this Alabama defense look this silly with Kelly Bryant at quarterback. We saw well, that last year. They just showed Brett Venerables. How about the job that he's done? Mix it, Rod. The mix that we've seen in terms of pressure and yep. coverage and then different types of pressure, fantastic. And again, they look like they were rushing for. They dropped somebody yep. back as a spy. Yep. yep. Tua tossing downfield for Judy. Got him. Got him. Right in front right of us, here. Jerry Judy, big time play. Man, that was necessary to close out the third quarter. Look at, <laughs> look at Jim. Awesome. Jimmy's having a ball right now. Jimmy's loving this. He might, be having some weird flash he might be having some weird flashbacks to his coaching days, but man, what a big play for Jerry Judy. I want to run out there and help him off. <laughs> Come on, I should help a catch. Look, at, look where we are right now. This is one of the coolest spots. Our field pass on ESPN2, we're back with you. 
at the end of the third quarter, 44 to 16. Let's see if Alabama's got something in them when you come back to Santa Clara. So the largest deficit that Nick Saban has ever faced as the head coach of Alabama going back to 2007. This is it. You're looking at it right now. Huge play to Jerry Judy a moment ago. Alabama hasn't scored since the opening minute of the second quarter of this game. Let's see what they got in store for us, if anything. Levy, Rod, why don't you guys take it? Trailing by 28 now. Hashmark closest to us. Two across the middle. Too high. Too tall for Devontae Smith. Couldn't haul it in. Fields on the coverage again, Rod. He is playing the game of a lifetime. Single coverage. He's been all over it, and he's using his hands very well. How about that, too? Senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. His dad was a stud at Washington State. Played in the NFL. He's been there for 46 games. He's not even the starter this year yeah. playing the game of his life in his final game. And he's Coach, feeling yeah. it, too. He's oh, feeling he, it. He wants the guy to come out now. He's looking to bring me somebody because <laughs> I want to shut down somebody else. Oh, here you go. Here's Jerry Judy. Yeah, you get that confidence. You, get, you want anybody. That's how Rod feels in the booth every week with me. Two throws. Able to is. complete. Jalen, that's the first time we've really seen Jalen Waddle in an impact offensive play tonight. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go uh, nostalgia on you here. Oh, okay? hit me, hit me. Irv nostalgia. Smith Jr., yep. his dad was a tight end for New Orleans that's right. when I was there. Mark Fields, the son, uh, the, the father, yep. linebacker with the Saints when I was there. So you know both now Mark got, Fields I bet and Irv Smith. They probably used to play with you. They used to hang out and play in the yard that's when fantastic. they were kids. And here they are playing on a national How cool stage. is that? First and goal for Alabama, guys. Sends Waddle in motion. Quick throw that came out in a hurry to the back, out of the uh, out of the out of bounds. Did not get the pile on there. Yeah, I don't think he got the ball. No, he, we we had a good look at it too here. I think he's out of bounds at the one and a half. Yeah. That's a good quick throw, though. You said it, Jim. You need to get the yeah. ball out fast if you're Tua. When, when Tua's holding the ball, they're struggling. When he's getting it out of his hand quickly, then they're having some success. They've got to get it out of, out of his hand quickly. And they've got playmakers. Just give it sure. to the playmakers. Let them make the plays down the field. Well, they need to score quickly. Yeah, this, is a, mu this, is, a, this exactly. is a must score. Exactly. Down 28. <laughs> On the ground. Harris. Wow. Did, I, I thought he had gotten there, and he never did. Christian, looked like the hole was there. Christian no, Wilkins, man. Covering. Christian Wilkins. I love this front. Chad Smith, Christian Wilkins. Everybody getting dirty for that Clemson defense. Yeah, they had a free hitter in there. It was unblocked, and he came up and got Harris. But they are burning too much clock with this drive. Way too much Again, clock. If you're, if you're down two touchdowns, yeah. fine. Not four. It if you're Alabama, gotta have it. Third one, right back. He's tripped up. Wow. Wilkins tripped him up. Christian Wilkins tripped him up in the backfield for the loss. Just, just look at the confidence and the way the Clemson players are moving around. They're not giving a yard, and they feel like they own that Alabama yep. offensive line down there. The, the penetration, Wilkins' penetration was unbelievable. Yeah. He ran the guard right back, but hey. Two off-tackle plays in a row. Clock's still running. Ah, More well, time. You don't have the confidence to run it now. You got to throw with your tool, right? Quick no. throw. Yeah, you got to throw on the edge. You can throw it out of bounds. You can run. You can save clock. Fourth down here. You got to make it. You got to make. It. You got to make it now. He's gonna try to run it. Try to get the corner. Won't get there. And oh, Dabo's the first man. Coach Moore, I don't get that at all. I don't either, Rod. I mean, everybody in the house knew they were going to go to the edge. You have to yeah. go to the edge in that situation. Well, and they put a fence up. Clemson well, you, put a fence up. Yeah, and you can't run. You tried running three straight plays. You couldn't get it in. Your quarterback, had, he, he can throw the ball. You've got some good receivers down there. Give yourself the best chance here, but to sweep with a guy coming off of a bad ankle? There's a lot of helmets slapping on this sideline. They're going wild, the Clemson people. This is... 
We are back, and it is, wow, it's all Clemson. Nobody could have pictured this, 44-16, Rod. And uh, it's always a pleasure, buddy. You're sending me away. It's good seeing you. Uh, it's good having dinner last night, too. Never never enough. Rodney, I'm going to invade the man cave before we get out of here, all right? I know you're well, right you down the road. You right? got it, pal. We'll give you a breather. Go put your feet up and go enjoy the fourth oh, quarter. I see. Trade out the old for the young. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's comic relief. You know, like in a baseball game when it's way out of hand, I got to bring somebody in to do something here. Are you lucky you got to be a blowout then, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Appreciate it, Rod. Good to see you, Rod. Say hi to America to Jordan Rogers. We go, we go from Rod to Rogers. Rod to Rogers, like what you did there. So if anybody was going to blow out anybody, it was going to be Alabama to Clemson, right? Yeah, don't look at my around, game right? pick before this happened. I, I really did not see this coming, especially in this manner. Clemson's been yeah. the aggressor all night. Offense and defense, too. Hey, Jordan, I know we talked about it at the top with every matchup in this game is like superstar versus superstar. What was the superstar matchup that you think Clemson won that kind of helped them get to this point? Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to figure it out. Okay, got gotcha. The technical. <laughs> leave, leave me. Do you want to you want to really? Because I'm curious what he has to say. I'm, 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 uh, I was, first of all, I was curious. Clemson is still taking deep shots. That's, what, that's <laughs> what's unbelievable. The trust they have in Trevor Lawrence and the poise he's had all night has been unreal. That, that's, that's fine. The first miss. That's his first miss. Is Dabo making a statement here? Is this foot on the throat? Are you kidding me? I, I, nothing I he loves something. more than looking up that scoreboard and saying we can add to it. Man. Another throw from Lawrence. Coming our way. Oh, nice job right at the end there by Job. Knocked that ball out. I'm, yeah, we, I'm we, fine, by the way. I'm fine. You're, are you okay, buddy? I'm good. <laughs> That's good. Thank you for your concern. My main concern. Yeah. We're going to send Jim Mora out, too. We're gonna I'm not giving this up. thing up. He doesn't want to. We got. I, I, do you want to mess with Pollock? I might throw it to the ground. <laughs> Pollock's like, you can Oh, stay. get in here. Nothing more fun than this. <laughs> <laughs> Pollock just walked away. Come on, man. I didn't get knocked down. <laughs> Maurice, come on over here. You'll never have so much fun in your feet. life. You got it, dog. We'll get, we'll get Pollock on the air here in a second. I got, I got, I got Reese Davis with me. <laughs> I almost caught the ball. This, this, is, this is frightening, too, right now for Pollock. I will, uh, I'm going to have Reese stick around until after the break as well because I really want to get his perspective on it. Somebody who obviously has been around both of these coaches for a significant amount of time these last several years. Oh, it's a short punt, guys. Dynasty building. Oh, the Alabama return player slipped. Yeah. That turns a bad punt into an okay punt. 11-12 left to step out. All Clemson right now. Back in Santa Clara, 30 unanswered points allowed by Nick Saban's crew, the most he's ever allowed unanswered in his tenure at Alabama. I wanted to bring Reese Davis in just for some perspective on this. This type of monumental performance, I know we still have 11 minutes left, but how can you kind of put this into perspective for us right now? It's been a remarkable performance by Clemson, and it feels like, now I'm not one of those guys that every time Alabama loses, rushes out to say the dynasty's over, and it's not over, they're not going anywhere. But it feels like a changing of the guard type game a little bit in terms of who's on top at the moment. Uh, not just for this game, but for, in terms of being the premier program. I mean, this is a thorough butt whipping. Uh, you know, they've beaten them in every aspect of the game. And, uh, you know, you don't see that happen to Knicks teams at Alabama. This is, this is going to be by far the worst loss in his 12 years there. They're, gonna, they're probably going to give up 50 before it's over. <laughs> There's only signs of stopping them. So it's, um, it's been a really, really impressive performance for Clemson. And if there's been any question about that whole Roy bus thing that Dabo was talking about, Clemson's on the front bus. Jalen Hurts in at quarterback, guys. Yeah, good call, Steve. They're, it's a they're throw. making the change. What do you think about this, Reese? Now, now Jalen Hurts into the game. Well, two has had a tough night. I mean, he's made some plays, but he's also had some catastrophic errors. And I think with um, with everything that Jalen has meant to this program and to the teams, you know, to give him a shot at it, let him finish out by being on the field and playing is probably the right thing to do. I mean, the game's out of hand, and you might as well give him a run at it before he decides what he's going to do next. Reese is going to be on the uh, trophy presentation as well after the game. We appreciate your time as always, and appreciate your perspective more than anything else. Hurts is taken down. He fumbles the football. Oh, wow. Let's see. And it's big Christian Wilkins making another play, guys. Yeah. Wilkins was unbelievable down here at the goal line before. Let's see if Hurts was down or not. No, but I think Alabama got it back. Pierce Baker there just got absolutely beat by Wilkins. Yeah. Jordan, guys, how about the uh, the change of quarterback now? Yeah. yeah, I mean, to me, I like it. 
I don't, I don't like it. I don't agree with it. Your only chance in this game is to throw the football. Tua is a better passer. I know he struggled, but Jalen Hurts, this was his weakness. So, yeah, from a leadership standpoint, you, you get a change of pace, but Tua's the better passer. So, to me, it's almost like folding your cards. Brought in uh, David Pollock here for a little more perspective on what he's seeing tonight, guys. Off his back foot. Jordan, do you think this is the case? Are we going to hear afterwards that Tua's ankle was worse than we all thought? Is that going to be an excuse made by Bama? Maybe, but I don't think so. Right. I mean, it didn't seem that way. I, I, Tua seemed healthy. They just got beat, man. That, yeah. I mean, Tua was not seeing the field early in the game very well at all. The interceptions were inexcusable. He looked off at safety, but didn't bother to look for the corner. I just, I don't think the ankle played into it. I just don't think he played sharp. David, did you have this? A 44-16 in favor of Clemson? Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Last night, Levy. Let's of go. course, of course. <laughs> we got to run that tape back, don't we? <laughs> we'll make it now. And Clemson will let that punt go. Down Clemson one. down to the one yard line. Yeah. They're going to get the football with 10 minutes left. Already leading 44 16. Could not have predicted this. Taco Bell has brought the best of the regular season to the college football playoff by creating the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. They're picking up the tab for 500 student tickets from each school at tonight's game, giving the biggest fans back to the biggest school fans. Wow. Taco Bell. This is like Death Valley West. I get the feeling that there's a bunch of like cats and dogs like who just heard that in their in their living rooms that just started freaking out in their living rooms right there. It's based on all that noise. Long field in front of Clemson here. Trevor Lawrence from his own end zone starting this drive in control with Travis Etienne on the run. David Pollock's with us. I wanted to get your perspective from I mean, we played three plus quarters at this point. Is this I mean, how do you perspective you know, put this into perspective right now for you what you've seen well i mean it's a butt whipping i mean there's no other way wow. i mean there's no other way to spin it you yeah know, two of the two plays worst game i've ever seen him play yeah. and especially early you talk about that pick six that i thought that was a great play by Ter terrell I, I thought it was more of a great play than two was sure mistake. but the second pick turnovers get inside the the five yard line get a offsides a uh, couple fourth down misses, and it's out of control. So it could have been closer, but let's be honest. Clemson clearly, clearly the better team, making Tua work harder, and it's been a beatdown. You know, we asked Jordan this question, too. I'd, I'd love to get your answers on this as Lawrence runs this one and takes a shot. Lawrence slides down here just beyond the 10-yard line. Yeah, I wanted to get Jordan and, and Dave in on this, guys. Just kind of curious, what's the matchup that you think, you know, with all the superstars at every level, Dave, what was the matchup that you think won Clemson this game or at least put them in a position to win this game? Well, we talked about it coming into the game was Alabama secondary is not what it's been in the past and yeah. making plays. Yeah. Ross, true freshman, by the way, he'll be back with Trevor Lawrence Thanks. for at least three years. So you'll see plenty more of that show, but just playmakers making plays against Alabama. Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence, we didn't think the stage would rattle him. I mean, this kid's been through a lot. He's so poised. He's so calm. And I just think the way he's handled himself, it just it shows you. Clemson, by the way, I, nobody got us confused. They ain't going anywhere. Right. And they're going to be right back here next year. ETN's got the first down and then some. Clemson is making it look easy right now. It's the, I mean, I agree with Paul. Like, the outside, the skill position, the receivers were unbelievable. But the offensive line... Not only in the running game, but given Trevor Lawrence time all game. And very frankly, I think Alabama got out coach. I mean, you heard Nick Saban say it before half that Clemson did some things that they weren't ready for. Yeah. Some copycat things that other teams that had success sex with. And Alabama wasn't ready. They were not ready for it. I think they got out coached in the first half and they weren't able to adjust. And they're attacking Quinn and Williams in the middle, which was supposed Absolutely. to be the strength. All we who heard all week was about Williams, the middle of that Bama front. He's yeah, been a non-factor. Who, who, who would have thought that would be the attacking, the, the player to attack? What about the fake field goal, Rodgers? You like that one? No, I, I hated it. Here's why. I don't mind the call, but on that play, you got to hand it to the kicker. It takes too long for the holder to get hey, up. Hey, 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 Teddy hand Roosevelt. Hand the ball to the kicker. Hold up. Roll. Hold up. When do you ever think hand the ball to the kicker is a good play Vandy call? We did it for a touchdown. It's not a good play yes, call. Man. We did it at Vandy for a touchdown. Yeah, that's That kicker Vandy. addresses the hey, ball. anchor down, boy. Up, simmer down. Hand it to him, and he gashes Hey, it. if you're going to go for it, put it into his hands. And I agree with that. Football on fourth and six. You know what, guys? I mean, there's a chance here. 
Alabama might not get the football again. I mean, they, they took seven minutes. Clemson took seven minutes off the clock at the end of the third quarter right. with a touchdown drive. There's seven minutes left in the championship game here. And Clemson is in complete control. I would imagine that's on Dabo's mind right now. Let's run the ball. First down, ETN, and more. Right in See ya. Us. Travis Etienne with the big play. Look at the body language. Wow. Alabama doesn't want to be out there right hey guys, now. Guys, I'm right here. I'm right, right on this. I'm on the the edge of the sideline right now. So I'm looking back. I mean, it's flat. You have guys. With, There's nothing worse than this feeling. They, this this has to be Dude, as low as they felt all year. Just want to get out of here yeah. right now. And they're you know, used to play. toying with people. They've never yes. been on the other side of this. And I, with all their five-star kids. Yeah. They probably have not been on the other side of this in high school either. Ever. I guarantee there's there's not many guys on the field that have ever looked up to the scoreboard and been down this much. In any kind of championship in anything, game, any state sport. championship, whatever. Basketball, sport, baseball. Right. Seriously, though, these are the best athletes of the best. Right. They don't lose in high school in anything. Now they're getting their butts whooped. Yep. They go to Feaster here. Reminds me of the, the Sean Watson story. Speaking of Clemson, he was talking about in high school he'd never trailed by more than seven points. Yeah, that's right. Going into the NFL playoff game. Never lost in college and high school by more than that. Unbelievable. But, yeah, Alabama, body language, it's over. Yeah, if you, I mean, again, we're standing over here. It's, it's, it's quiet. It's flat. It's brutal right now. Well, for these let's guys. be honest. Everybody knows it is over. There is no, like, it's kind of over. It's over. Yeah. This, this sucks. There's and, again, do about it. we're over here with the fans, too, like, I mean, there's nobody. There's there's a couple people cheering. I imagine that's uh, the result of some uh, concoctions at some point, one or another. But I mean, they're 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 all in their seats right now. It's it is incredible to see this. Hey, Pollock, what uh, we we talked a little bit about. This means that Clemson, I think, is 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 here. We knew they were, but they're here. What does this do to Alabama? We've never seen this happen to a Nick Saban team. Does this affect? How you look at Nick Saban, how you look at this team, how you look at this program moving forward. Do you have any? I think, you know, I think if they lost, be one thing, but to get your yeah, door, that's what doors I mean. blown yeah. off this way, hey, it gives Saban plenty of motivation to go into oh, the that's true. season, right? That's well, true. It's, kind of, it's kind of fair to say, too, though, like the, the identity of this team, remember, has been an offensive team that throws the ball all over the yard, right. and it's yeah. kind of changed. Well, tonight, I feel like if they were their old selves, they would have had more success, and they have. They've still outrushed Clemson, even with a couple of big runs late, but I think the toys and the, the playing with the offense, it came back to bite them. And that, that might be something that's visited in the offseason, but Clemson or Alabama's, they're going to be right in the mix next year. This isn't going to change. Clemson's going to be obviously in the mix. I think it's interesting to start looking at Clemson for next year. Yep. They lose a lot in that defensive front. Yep. Up, up, they, up. They've had a stretch now with those guys that they've been so fortunate to have up front. And that's obviously going to change. But... Trevor Lawrence is going to be spinning hey. bean, and that ain't stopping anytime. He's a bad man. Be the, the big key. And Travis Etienne's going to be back for another season. These young receivers. Remember, by the way, let's uh, let's play corporate chill for a second. Thursday, August 29th, 2019, we're going to launch our ACC Network football coverage. Clemson is going to open things up against Georgia Tech. And by the way, then they host Texas A&M the week after. It's not an Ooh, easy start. That's pretty solid. That's a pretty solid start. So the non-conference schedule is going to look really sharp right off the bat. Alabama starts in Atlanta against Duke. So they'll take on another ACC team to start their year. It's great. You think about the ACC who had a really down year right outside of Clemson. And now they're watching this. Right? They, we got to deal with Dexter Lawrence for two more seasons. Absolutely. I mean, for uh, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence yeah. Yeah, for two more seasons. And, and you know what? That shouldn't be lost. They're doing this without Dexter Lawrence. Yes. Think yeah. about that for a second. Alabama couldn't do anything offensively without the big man in the middle for Clemson. By the way, Pollock just abandoned me, just so you guys know. He's, He's disinterested <laughs> as the Alabama players now. <laughs> He's going to fix his hair. Okay, more vain than any, I've ever known. Anybody by, I've ever known. By the way, the only guy with better hair than, than uh, Jordan Rogers right now is Lawrence. Gets that first down run. The only guy with... With, with that, all right, I don't want to make a hair comment. Oh, there, oh yeah, hold Mike on. Mike Jr. just came <laughs> hang out with us for a little bit. Mountain man himself. All right, let, give me, we got three minutes left until they crown this thing. Give me your perspective on what you've seen tonight. It has been a wall-to-wall -wall bit of domination from Clemson physically in a way that I was not ready for on both lines of scrimmage. Clemson's offensive line was the biggest question mark coming in tonight for me, and the way that they have handled the footing up front, especially giving Trevor Lawrence the time we've seen him get all night to make these plays downfield has been remarkable. And they're in no hurry right now, guys. Play clock all the way down to one. I, I was half kidding about them, not Alabama not touching the football again. Yeah, but they're not going to. Yeah, they're not. Listen to this place. 
This is absolutely incredible. Nobody saw a game like this coming, and right now Clemson is 245 away from their second title in the last three years. So we are on the Clemson sideline, and the chant from the Clemson fans were SEC, wow. SEC. We want Bama. We want Bama. They got them. They got, they got Bama. Them, right. They got Bama in a big way yes. tonight, man. 28-point lead, 30 unanswered points, which is the other thing that kind of amazes me. Christian Wilkins, one of the all-time good kids in college football, came back for his senior year, William Campbell Trophy winner. He was crying. I mean, he was really emotional. Chase Bryce is in the game now for Clemson. And by the way, let's not forget, Chase Bryce, had he not done what he did Huge. in that Syracuse game yes. when Lawrence got hurt, there's no way, well, I don't want to say no way, but there's a big chance Clemson wouldn't be here right now. They talked so much about the Jalen Hurts game for Alabama in the SEC title game and how that propelled, but you're right, looking back to that point in the season, that's after that big gamble by this Clemson coaching staff. And Dabo Swinney, got to give him all the credit for the world for making that decision, yeah. having this kind of foresight. Golik, do, do the Notre Dame people feel any better now after what <laughs> Clemson is doing to Alabama? A little bit. You have to think so, and I mean, really, the backup defensive backs for Notre Dame. Julian Love goes out, and those guys get all the shredding in the world for these Clemson receivers going up and getting it. These guys are going to be able to do it with anyone in the country. They have put that on display tonight. Well, at the beginning of the year, we, we knew that these two teams would be in the mix, and I, I would imagine Georgia, Ohio State, kind of the, the typical players these last couple of years. As the year went on, I think these two teams clearly separated themselves. You could talk about the others as well, but these were clear-cut, I think, the two best teams in the country, and... I think Clemson made it a clear point that they're the best team in 2018 for this season. Absolutely. You cement it. And you play this game 100 times, it's never going to look like this probably even two or sure. three other That's times. Right. These two teams are very evenly matched across the board. But in a game like this, you see the way a couple of mistakes in the red zone, some inconsistent throwing down in that area by Tua, all of a sudden can snowball when the other side as motivated and as angry. Like Clemson played angry from the jump of this game in a way that Alabama just wasn't able to match. Yeah. And they're still trying to hang a 50 spot right now. I mean, they're not taking a knee. They're yep. not full. They're still trying to score. Well, they got, they got a couple guys. Adam Choice, he's a redshirt senior. They got Will Sweeney's in the game, Dabo's son, Chase Bryce, obviously, we mentioned. I mean, they're, they're everybody's loving it, and I know you're on the Clemson side, guys. They're, oh, yeah. They're milking this. They're way. raising the roof over here. I didn't know that was still a thing. Is that a thing? <laughs> it is. We're I bringing it back. I guess. <laughs> Bring it back. Let's go. Dabo just got the hug and kiss from his wife. That's a first down, and that's yeah. the ball game. Guys, incredible, incredible performance by Clemson tonight. This is going to be their third national championship in program history. Dabo knows it. Brent Venables knows it. We talked about it. The best two teams in the country this year. They had an opportunity to show it off here in Santa Clara. And this is a performance for the ages by Dabo Swinney and the Clemson Tigers. 44 to 16, one of the biggest losses in Nick Saban's career. His worst loss as the head coach of the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Clemson Tigers, your 2018 national champions. What, what a statement Clemson made here tonight. In every back, they, they pushed the bully in the mouth. And that's the thing. I think everybody was telling them, okay, yeah, you're coming. You're almost there, but you're not Alabama. They got a seat at the table right now. They got the biggest seat at the table. You're right. They punched them in the mouth, and Alabama didn't have an answer. Adam, why don't you give us a final thought over from your side? Yeah, guys, obviously we talked about it from the start. Is this a defining game? Is this the perhaps a passing of the torch? in some ways for a lot of these guys on this team. They wanted to make a point. They wanted to prove something. They proved a lot tonight if you're the Clemson Tigers. Major statement for this program, no doubt about it. They get to carry this forward with a young core at all these positions coming back next year ready to make more noise. Steve? All right, fellas, nice job over there. It's, it's raining uh, purple and <laughs> orange here. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is quite a scene, something that will never get old for Clemson, even though they've won a couple now. And uh, What a story, to, and what a way to cap the season. Look, in the media, we want a dramatic last game of the yeah, championship. This was dramatic. <laughs> yes, I mean, exactly. in, in one way it was. Right. It was Nick Saban getting beat down in a manner that we have never seen, nor did we ever think was possible. Just happened. Simply amazing what we have seen today. Alabama has their world rocked.
Levy, how about it? How was the field pass for you, my man? I think it was good. I think we should try to do this every single week on the Mega Cast. Are you available every week to do this? Oh, yeah. All right. It's time now to set it to college football final, presented by Capital One. Adnan Burke, Jesse Palmer, and Joey Galloway are standing by. It has been a blast. The only people who had more fun than we did are all the Tigers of Clemson. Congratulations to your Death Valley National Champions 2019.